since. I so you're going to build sorry. me up into a fever pitch for my grilled cheese sandwich with bacon on the uh, whole wheat toast? Mm. Anyway, where the hell is that? Oh, first this fax, arrogant for dropping. Now, I didn't say that we were arrogant for dropping a bomb. I was reading Nelson Mandela's comments. I don't believe that for a second. I think Truman had big balls, and we need to do that and save a hell of a lot of American lives. It was war, baby. That's right. In addition to which, does anybody remember Pearl Harbor? I don't see any comparison between what's happening in none, Iraq. None. And how come he keeps saying Iranians again and has to correct yeah, himself? Would well, somebody uh, please show thing. our president... Like, get him a compass and a road map and show him where Iraq and Iran are on a map and explain to him that Iranians don't live in Iraq. Or well, Iraq. Anyway, it says, uh, arrogant for blah, blah, blah. It has to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, there are a lot of things that are being said that I don't agree with. For example, the thing with the French. We got an article on our website today about the French, which has got some good points. But the fact of the matter is, the French, number one, never met a terrorist they didn't like. And number two, the French were the ones that sold the nuclear reactor to Sodom in the first place, which the Israelis had to blow up for us. So they did not have nuclear weapons. Anybody remember that? I sure do. So you know what we say about the French? <laughs> F them. That's what we say about the French. Haven't I always told you about that? F the French. Haven't you? Exactly. Absolutely. At any rate. Greenpeace boats sinking frogs. Scumbags. And by the way, your food sucks, okay? Here's one that says, sorry if you've heard this, but saw on WB39 this morning, the Sun Sentinel next Wednesday will include a Smallville poster. Oh! Tom Willing isn't naked as we'd all hope, but, but keep in mind that from the neck up, he looks really good. You don't want to see any more, especially those big size 82 feet. Uh, by the way, didn't hear the whole show yesterday, but it sounds like my suggestion, the monkeys hit a nerve. Take care, K, whoever the hell K is. Well, thank you, K. But uh, now what does that mean? Oh, that's because George doesn't like the monkeys. And we're not doing that poll, by the way. I changed my mind. Didn't I say that yesterday? We're not doing that poll about artists. Because, like I said, and how did I ever get sucked into that? I don't know. How did I ever get sucked into that? Because, uh, well, it's not easy coming up with an interesting poll, especially something people will talk. Oh, don't answer the phone. Because we're going to do screenless 9 to 10 every day. I'm talking about of the calls I take. I'm not oh. going to say the whole hour would do screenless. You'd have to be, you'd have to be suicidal to do that. But I'm saying of the calls I take, that always engenders more response, spices it up a little bit. What, what do you give me like a bug-eyed look now? Plus, it Plus makes your life a lot easier, which no you were kidding. all excited about the uh, the comedy of its 9 to 10 hours, so here's another Any, chance anything, for you to sit there and hock it shining with Carlos to, uh, about his bank account. Phone. I don't want to hear what he has to say. And tell him, you owe me $50. But who the hell wants to hear what he has to say? Nobody wants to hear what he has to say. And still he says it. I mean, don't take it personal. It's like when I was in there taking a dump this morning, and he's in there uh, in, the, in the sink again, floating around, and Zach came in. God, Zach, I thought was going to mistake him for like a piece of leftover sandwich or something and eat him right there in a the goddamn tea room. I could say something, but... And there was like all of that food out there, too. I did have a couple of strips of bacon. So, in other words, you're telling me now we have to wait for Ponytail to call you back? I will keep trying all the We may the have to send Carlos have to out to pick up a grilled cheese sandwich across the street at the uh, stadium diner. Sure. If you don't get a call back soon. I'm, I'm just horny for a... a that was really good. In fact, it if Geldy was really my friend, which he's not, but if Geldy was really my friend, when those guys get the food from Howie's in the morning, how come there's not a grilled cheese on a whole wheat for me in there? I'll pay him for it. Do you think they're paying for that food or not? Is it a freebie? I'll be more than happy to pay for it. So I've heard. No, not that. Oh, no way. Here's a Keith Blaney who stopped by. Oh, no, the reason I played that Enrique thing, here's this fax. Jonathan says, I'm one of your younger listeners. I've been listening to your show for close to two years since I moved down here. I'm 25, and I love your show. That's what we want is a lot of 25-year-old guys. That's what I want. Don't change a thing, and contrary to what the other faxers said, the comedy bits are hilarious. I think the new Mo songs, Ginger and Mo Gay Union and Watch Your Back, Zach, are classics. And you know what? Absolutely correct, sir. Jonathan says, keep playing them. Also used to play an Enrique song that said something like, tell Neil I want him to come over, which I just played. Was hoping you could play it sometime because I haven't heard it in a long time. Take care and all the best to you. There you go, Jonathan. And there was the... How do you like that? Huh? We're right on top of it, baby. So all you naysayers, all you poo-pooers out there, <coughs> poo-poo on this, okay? That's what we say here. As we try somehow desperately to undo the damage that Greg Reed has done to our lineup and to this program. Try to put the pieces together like frickin' Humpty Dumpty. Next time he comes in there and talks to you long after I'm gone, when it's the coast is clear and things are safe, Tell him we really appreciate the nice job he's done here. Tell him we'd rather we'd rather follow the test pattern. Here's West Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, that factor was right, man. Your show's really gone crappy. Yeah. And. And that's it. And thanks for listening. Thank you. Okay. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on again. See, I mean, this like I've said before. What do those calls mean? That the guy's got mental problems? He's listening. Not only is he listening, he's calling to share that with us. 
our show has gone crappy. It's gone in the crapper. I'm, I'm just, I'm crushed. Yeah, I know. I haven't got a clue what we're going to do now. Here's the towel. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon line. WQAM. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. The show's not gone crappy, and I don't think you should try to format it. Your best shows are when you just come in and start start doing your stuff. Start screwing around. Just, you know, I mean, you don't need no this format from 9 to 10. Right. Just come in. That's right. Turn it on. That's and, right. And just because the best stuff happens spontaneously. Spontaneously, like when George was rolling around on the floor before. And, and, and another thing. With Carlos. Bush, Bush sucks. Okay. And then, and then my last my last comment is, um, are you going to go to the, 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 the All-Star game this weekend? No. 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 I'm, uh, let me say it again. No. I never okay, go no. to I In fact, I even on television, I won't be watching it. Really? I don't care about All-Star games of any, uh, any sport. They're just a caca. When I go to see a hockey game, I want to see a real game. Uh, me too, but I think I, I, I still enjoy watching all the getting all the best players in one. But all the best players aren't going to be there. There'll be no Mario, no Matt Sundin, no um, uh, Sacco yeah. Koivu. There's a lot of guys that aren't playing. No Eddie Belfour. Yeah, you're right. By the way, you're go right. Leafs, go. 5-2 oh! over Atlanta last night. Have a great day, sir. Enjoy the game. I'm not going to no All-Star game. Let me say it again. Why do these people act so surprised? Oh, you're not a real hockey fan. Bull crap. I watched more hockey last night than most of you in your life. Just last night. Saw a good part of the Penguin-Washington game. Saw the Leafs game, beating Atlanta 5-2. Panthers in Detroit, a very boring 2-2 tie. What else did I watch? There must have been one other one. There was one other one. i got to have like oh, six. Uh, I'm going to have to have six sets like Rimmer now so I can watch like a whole bunch of games at the same time. But I do. I watch uh, a lot. I enjoy I love it if it's a good game. Penguin-Washington game was a coma inducer, but nevertheless. And these people, oh, well, you got to go. I, I'm not interested in the All-Star game. There's no hitting. It's an exhibition game. The score is like 15 to 10. It, it's a joke. But I'm not discouraging people. The place is going to be packed. going to be a lot of people there, pretenders. Like Mo this morning. Oh, it's All-Star weekend. He hates hockey. He's not going to be there. He's not interested. Geldy told me that he was like under penalty of death if he talked about it for more than 30 seconds consecutive on that show. Penalty of death. He said that Mo was going to, you know, put that cord, that uh, colostomy bag cord around his neck and strangle him. Especially during football season, it is a no-no is what it is. It's a... No, no. Uh-huh. During that show. Mo, ho, Mo. See, now you got me confused. I don't know what the hell to call him. Well, I do know what to call him. He's an asshole. WQAM. Uh, yeah, I'd like to talk to Neil. Speaking. Neil. Yes, sir. Uh... I just wanted to say something about Bush. You know, it, it really bugs me that this guy is the hero of 9-11. <clears throat> when he got a specific warning on August 6, 2001, that we were going to have an attack, mm -hmm. and he did nothing about it. Yeah, well, we've already been through all of that, sir, but the problem is the American people, most of them are just as ignorant or even dumber than he is, and so as a result, they, you know, wave the flag and they get all whipped up and emotional, and they don't understand. They don't see through all of this crap. Right, and... The, the press goes along with it. And you, know, and you notice in all of these weeks and months now that have gone on where they've had to make the case for this invasion of Iraq, they, because they can't find specifics, they keep making all of these allusions to these general things that, that don't exist. And they keep having a press conferences, and the uh, press corps, they yuck it up with Rumsfeld, you know, everything's a big joke, and they yuck it up with Ari Fleischer the other day, everything's a big yuck yuck. And in the meantime, we're talking about dropping nuclear weapons. Right. And, you know, and I've heard that anybody that asks the really tough questions they kind of get excluded. Yeah, they suddenly don't call on them anymore. Right. It's like the kid that gets put in the back of the classroom. Exactly. So. Well, good luck to you, pal. Hang, hide under the bed. I'll be seeing you. Okay, bye. Okay. Nukes use in Iraq could spin out of control, writes Senator Ted Kennedy. It's uh, from the L.A. Times. It's in today's Sun Sentinel. Do I have time to read it now? No. I, in fact, I may not read it. But you ought to read it. It's right there in your Sun Sentinel on the op-ed page. Nukes use in Iraq could spin out of control. A dangerous world just grew more dangerous, says Teddy Kennedy. Reports that the administration is contemplating the preemptive use of nuclear weapons in Iraq should set off alarm bells that this could not only be the wrong war at the wrong time, but it could quickly spin out of control. Initiating the use of nuclear weapons would make a conflict with Iraq potentially catastrophic, says Senator Ted. Which we know and the public is going, blah, 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 that I'm bad, we be good, you know, and screw everybody else. Tell with everybody else. Uh, when that when that statement, that foreign policy statement came out several months ago, remember when I read it on the air? Right, and it's in Mother Jones. Uh, how, how come everybody was like saying, are you out of your mind? You make Teddy Roosevelt look like a Sunday school preacher. Are you crazy person? All of a sudden we're going to become imperialist and we're better than everybody else and uh, nobody else is going to, uh, uh, et cetera, like that. Do you hear that? I heard it. That was Jack Sneaking Cafferty. It's another, he's another uh, asshole. 
Sports Radio 560 QAM. This is the Neil Rogers Show. This is your brain. Any questions? I can remember back when radio was cool. I said when I grow up, that's what I want to do. But now it's run by greedy corporate holes and suits that only care about the bottom line, not you. They are a pippin' in their power. Three at five sixty WQM. It's our official start of the show now. That's what we do. Nine to ten, we screw around, and then we start the show at ten. Not good. I think we solved it again, and maybe not. And then if not, then Monday we'll solve it a different way. Huh? We'll do something. Oh, by the way, Lowry Mays, you asshole, and David Ross, you asshole. Yeah, at Cheap Channel. That's the reason I played that. Hearings yesterday in Washington, and Clear Channel says, "Oh well, uh, we succeed when radio stations serve the needs of local communities." <laughs> right. When's that going to start? You cookie cutter morons, you you asshole. Right. Oh, he. I like the way he says that. You know what? That is like with real. In fact, uh, I bet you Lynn has just got emotional now. She probably reached for the cucumbers. Man. Well, she gets excited when she hears that. You asshole. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Try to spruce up her sex life a little bit. That was our poll yesterday, which we'll get to momentarily after I vent about Clear Channel Communications. The head of Clear Channel Communications, Inc., yesterday sought to convince skeptical U.S. lawmakers that the nation's largest radio station owner is not the arm-twisting brute portrayed by smaller rivals and musicians. Clear Channel CEO Lowry Mays... You asshole! ...flatly denied allegations from rock star Don Henley and other critics that the media empire's 1,200-plus stations have muscled out smaller rivals, taken bribes to play songs, or engaged in other anti-competitive practices. You asshole! Facing sharp questioning from members of the Senate Commerce Committee, Mays pointed out he painted Clear Channel as a fierce competitor that has thrived since media regulations were relaxed in 1996 under Bubba due to its careful audience research. Now, I do understand that he didn't appoint all the members of the FCC, but nevertheless, it was during the Bubba era, so it's one you can't to blame on Bush. We succeed when radio stations serve the needs of local communities, Mays said. You asshole! Clear Channel takes in, now listen to this, roughly one out of four advertising dollars in the radio industry and also oversees rapidly growing concert promotion and billboard advertising businesses. If ever, in fact, if you look up Parker Brothers Monopoly, you'll see a picture of uh, uh, Pete Bolger. And David Ross. You asshole. And Ronna Fink-Wolf. You asshole. Critics say it's created a bland network. Here we go. Here is the definitive comment about Cheap Channel. Critics say it's created a bland network of sound-alike stations that vary little from city to city, which I just got through saying only moments ago. Here is Dr. Laura. Here is Lord Ash Limbaugh. Here is uh, the Schnittmeister. Here is uh, whatever else. And that's all I got. No thanks. Car wash guys just asking if I wanted my car wash. We don't get nervous about it. The other, what, what was he talking about? That's how it was. I just said no thanks. Maybe they thought Miguel just came in here and flashed or something. I don't know. Well, I'm doing a radio show now. Okay, Miguel, it's not nice to talk with your mouth full. They've also charged uh, Clear Channel with using their radio market power to squeeze out rivals, jack up concert ticket prices, and steer business to its concert promotion arm. That's why they got all those billboards, by the way, beside the fact that this place is such a cheap-ass outfit and uh, lies a lot. But that's why they got all the 80 million billboards is because they own them. Ha uh-huh. ha. Allegations of payola-like pay-for-play practices have dogged a cheap channel along with the rest of the music business. Don Henley accused Clear Channel of blackballing artists who didn't tour with its concert promotion arm or play for free at benefit shows put on by its radio stations. You know what it reminds me of? You remember when they were out there in yes. uh, Vegas? 
And they were talking to Al Martino, Johnny, uh, what Johnny Fontaine. Right. And yeah, they had him sign a contract. Well, you know, uh, we appreciate blah blah blah. And the Godfather likes uh, da da dee. And performing so many times, perform so many times a year, and encourage some, some of your friends in the business to, to do the same, etc. Yeah. Et yeah. That's what it uh -huh. reminds me of. Henley, whose greatest hits package with his band the Eagles ranks as the number one selling record of all time, said he could be scratched from Clear Channel playlist for testifying in front of the committee, but Mays dismissed his charge. As long as our audience wants to hear Mr. Henley's music, he has no threat of retribution, Mays replied. Over the past year, Clear, Clear Channel has emerged as a poster child for both the drawbacks and benefits of media consolidation as the FCC considers whether to relax ownership limits further. Squirt, squirt. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah, that's what the big furor is about. We're doomed. Well, not that fewer. Some lawmakers point to Clear Channel when they voice concerns that loosened ownership caps would allow broadcasters to focus on cutting costs by laying off staff rather than serving local markets and providing a wide range of news and entertainment programming. We must preserve radio as a medium for democracy, said Wisconsin Democratic Senator Russ Feingold, who has introduced a bill that would prevent Cheap Channel from expanding further and curb its alleged anti-competitive practices. But several Republican senators said, oh, here's my favorite, all you good right-wingers out there. Several Republican senators said the company was simply practicing sound business and helping turn around an industry that was largely unprofitable ten years ago. Huh? Feingold and California Democratic Representative Howard Berman said they had asked the Justice Department to investigate, but had gotten no response. The Justice Department did not return a call seeking comment. This is from Washington Post. Arizona Republican Senator John McCain peppered Mays with questions and quibbled with him over several claims, but did not in indicate whether his committee would take up Feingold's bill or otherwise press the company further. Yeah. Several Republican senators said the company was simply practicing sound business practices. In other words, we like monopolies. We like big business. That's our bread and butter. That's what it's all about. And by the way, no butter on my grilled cheese, please, ponytail. Well, he made such a production out of that. Carlos, you know, he returned a call when you were out taking a crap or whatever you were doing. Is that what you were doing? I was taking a pee. Well, okay. You don't have to get sensitive about the audiences now marking these things down, okay? 10.03, George takes a pee. And don't blame right. me, okay? See? Just calm down. You asshole. He just says that with such emotion. I mean, just from the bowels of his vigor. throat. Man, sounds like it starts in his rectum and comes out his mouth. Like a lot of other things he says. So anyway, there you go. Cheap Channel says, hey, it's a, for, what they're basically trying to say is, I mean, I thought it was like free enterprise. So in other words, if the radio was unprofitable, it's like every other industry. The right. people who can make it, you know, they survive. But at least, at least they have the opportunity to come in and bring in alternative programming, to create jobs for different people, to, you know, to do, give the audience out there something to choose from instead of the same cookie-cutter crap in every market in the country. The good ones thrive, the bad ones right. fail. But, of course, the people, some people in this country aren't for free enterprise. All they care about is big business, making it stronger and giving you fewer choices. For example, the people who were uh, buying drugs on the Internet from Canada. Did you see that I story? I saw story this yeah, morning. Yeah, glass. Another, right. Now they want to stop that. Right. We're going to cut, you cut off your uh, water if you keep doing that up because we want to be able to gouge the public. Right. In, in other words, if you can buy something for a dollar instead of ten dollars, shouldn't you be able to do that? That's called the free marketplace. Not if it's medicine and your life depends on it. Oh, I forgot about that. And you have to choose between having a meal and, like, taking your medicine, things like right. that, which so many people are doing. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I, I, you know, I think, I think that a lot of people in this country do like to get raped. It? I, I, re I really do. Well, it's funny. Because it's happening every day. Nine minutes after ten. Now, what am I getting so worked up about here? Okay, just calm down, relax. It's Friday. We're very excited about that. We finally uh, figured out that nine to ten hour. We'll just do the comedy bits nine to ten on Wednesday mornings, which I'm sure will upset Pete from uh, KAT or whatever he's. But that's the way it goes. You can't please everybody. In fact, in this town, it's a miracle if you can ever please anybody. I got it. Yeah. Screenless comedy bedtime stories. Screenless comedy bedtime stories. Uh, with two or three pulls and music and a lot of music. And some Bee Gees. You asshole. And a lot of sports scores. Four to three, two to one, five two, Maple Leafs. We could have Zach do updates, as a matter of fact. We don't want Zach doing updates on this show. We don't take it personal, Zach. We like you, but we don't have room in here for you. We, we don't. Do we have room in here for him? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> no, this is not a big studio, okay, Zach? No. Seriously, he. I mean, what is he thinking about? Food. <laughs> That's right. any given moment? Very good answer. Good answer, like they say on Family Feud. Good answer. Good answer, George. That is what he's thinking about. And one of these days, you know what he's going to be, don't you? Dead? Dead.
Come on, Zach, cut with all the goddamn... Pl Plus, he's under all of this stress now. Now they know that dagger is pointed straight at his fat back. And, boy, that's a hard target to miss. So he's under this enormous... What did he say when we were in there? I was taking a dump and you were brushing your earlobe or whatever you were doing. And he said something about, uh, you know, like 30 sleepless nights. Because he's under such tremendous pressure, you know. Afraid that he might fart in uh, Moe's face or like the wrong flavor or something like that. Or look at him cross-eyed and right away... You asshole! You're out. You know, plus give me some good guess, damn it. You're, you're my problem. Yeah, we well, you know what your problem is, Mo. It's a four-letter word. It's called life. Now, speaking of food, how about Bagel Chai, man? The Bagel Chai is now under new ownership with the same great name and even better food than ever. The Bagel Chai restaurant in Delhi at the southeast corner of Pines and University has got new owners Brian and Fran. And the place, like I just said only moments ago, is even better than it used to be. They feature hand-rolled bagels, and everything is made fresh from scratch. Whitefish salad, egg salad, tuna salad, chicken salad, and more. Stop in today for the best lunch special in the universe. You'll get a sandwich piled high with delicious corned beef, pastrami, turkey, or salami, fries, coleslaw, pickle, and soda, only five ninety nine. Why waste money on fast food when you can get homemade food fast and fresh? Stop in today for lunch and see Brian and Fran. They're open until 3 in the p.m. If you're having a party, let them customize a party platter for you. They've got platters for any size, group, or occasion. The Bagel High opens daily for breakfast at 6 a.m. with hot, fresh, handmade rolled bagels seven days a week and a 2.59 breakfast special, which includes two eggs, potatoes, oatmeal, coffee, and a bagel. Check them out at the southeast corner of Pines and University in Pembroke Pines. Call ahead for takeout, 954-987-8605. That's 954-987-8605. The Bagel High Restaurant and Deli. It's the real Mechaya. <laughs> Sports Radio 560, QAM. Friday, you bastards. Yeah, I know who's both time is. Sorry. Sure. Couldn't possibly be us. Are you sorry? Watch your back, Zach. But what? You won't wait for Moe, no, Moe, no, Moe, no, Moe, no, Moe. Watch your back, Zach. But you won't wait for Moe, no, Moe. You asshole. I got enough I gotta think about on top of getting raped in, and I don't need a rating that's a minus eight. Don't care what you do, long as it's understood. You gotta wait a little harder on the guest you book. Or else you got to go. There's a lot of fat producers, you know. That's right. Watch, Watch your back, back Zach. Zach. Or you won't wait for mo, no mo, no mo, no mo, no mo. Watch your back, Zach. Or you won't wait for mo, no mo. Oh, brother, all that blubber I don't understand. Uh, you can eat from a trough while using both hands. Yeah, big fat punch, you made a rating full. You just like Clinton, it's all your fault. Better straighten your fat ass out. Or we'll take the food out of your mouth. That's right, punch, punch your back, back, Jack. Or well, you, you won't wait for mo, no mo, no mo, no mo, no mo. No, 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 punch your back, Jack. Or well, you, you won't wait for mo, no mo. Listen what we say! Watch your back, Zach. Or you won't wait for mo, no mo, no mo, no mo, no mo. Watch your back, Zach. Or you won't wait for mo, no mo. You know who I am? You're lucky you got a job here. Try that one more time and you're all fired! Yes, the boss. 1017 at 560 WQM. The fax machine is smoking, baby. It's on fire, practically. Let's see, here's the one that says, It's time for that old bastard Nelson Mandela to be eaten by a lion and have the lion Schmidt on Miriam uh, Oliphant and have Janet Thumperino call the play-by-play -play with Howard Nomo David while Bob Mad Dog Lasseter screams stock quotes to a sold-out Raymond James Stadium. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, brother. Those Tampa people, man. Now that they won the Super Bowl, you thought they were bad before? Now they're really like that. Here's one that says, This is interesting. It says, you spoke about guys that are good-looking but get uglier as they take off their clothes. Oh, you won't believe who I threw a fax away from, besides uh, crazy HH from wherever he is. Mitch. Remember Mitch from Video Waves? No. Who was joined at the hip with Andy? No, I, I remember with Mitch this from Video Waves. Really... And he's excoriating me about, well, sandwich, uh, sandwich, oh, you're an idiot, Mitch. At least you're consistent, okay? Don't give me lectures about what to say on the air, okay? The organization is just continuing to dismantle the team, and don't BS me. Anyway, you spoke about guys that are good-looking but get uglier as they take off their clothes. I also heard you some time ago mention that May Matt Damon and the talented Mr. Ripley looking so pale and pasty, which was on purpose. There's one scene in The Born Identity where Mr. Damon is washing a woman's hair and takes off his shirt. Let me tell you, this is one scene and just his arms alone make the DVD purchase worth every penny. Ma penny, mama me, it says. How do you like that? See, I can't, you know what bothers me about him? 
the the teeth he's got when he smiles or laughs like there's something about his teeth. <laughs> when you see the scene, you won't be looking at his face. It says, of course, he doesn't take enough off in the scene. It isn't. She says it's not very long, or he or whoever the, it isn't very long. Well, I thought did, it was just his if whole he didn't face. take his clothes off, how'd they know it isn't very long? His whole, no, not his whole face. You'd think that he's ugly. I, I think he's ugly. Like kind of like horsey looking, you mean? Like uh, Carlos ugly. No, oh, that's now you really. Have lost it, okay? Now I know that your shipment well, must whatever. have come in in time for the there's, weekend. There's nothing. You, there's nothing anybody out there needs some real good drugs? He's call nubbish. George, okay? Because obviously, the shipment came in. You asshole! He's not even mediocre. Matt Damon? Right. That's not true. All right. Well, what do you know about guys anyway? Well, what do you know about women? Plenty. I know good-looking women. I'm the one who turned you on to Britney Spears. Right. Ah, uh -huh, yes, See? he admits well, that. You got one right. You wouldn't know Britney Spears from your ass, okay, if it wasn't for me. Yeah, and even if like me. Stop. I know a beautiful, a hot-looking babe when I see one. That doesn't mean I want to do her, but I sure can recognize it. Well, I know what As an ugly guy looks pussies like. Pussies out there. Oh well, I don't, yeah. Well, you're sitting right next to one. You exactly. Know what, what there looks you like. go. Just anything that looks anywhere close. God to Almighty, that. is he grotesque? Where the hell do you find him? Under anyway, the here's one that says, uh, they're, they're, "I'm telling you, the facts people are psychotic today." What do you mean you're not doing the rock and roll bands that shouldn't be uh, playing here, you asshole? <laughs> That's what it says. You asshole. It's Friday. We want to have some fun. You're getting us all worked up. Relax, brother. It says, I'm relaxed. Do I sound a little hyper today? Not me. I'm relaxed. What the hell's wrong with you? No, the reason we're not doing that poll is because it dawned on me once we started that it, it could go on for like months. I mean, with a, if, if this is a market where there were like some reasonable music stations, then it would be like a limited number. But since they don't play any good groups for the most part, then we could have every every group you like. That's what you'd like to have on that poll. And you'd be right. Even the monkeys, George. Even the I'm monkeys. I'm still foaming at the mouth about what you said you asshole. about the monkeys yesterday. A lot of people like the monkeys. Now, look, let's uh, face it. We're talking different era. The music that they're sending all these facts, and which is a good sign. That means we got somebody under the age of 100 out there listening. I like the monkeys. I don't think they're. I'm not being talking about the zoo, okay? I'm not the metro zoo. I'm talking about the music. I don't think they're being underplayed. I I can't tell you the last time I heard a monkey song. Of course, I also can't tell you the last time I turned on FM. Do you think that there magic is? Who plays the monkeys besides who the hell magic? Knows? Who else? Who else would play them? How would I well, know? So wait a minute. So how do, how do you know that they're not being that they're not being played too little? Uh, if you're not listening. When uh, I used to listen to the radio every once in a when while. When was this? What it. year was this? What decade? What century? Huh? 1980. 1980. That's about the last time I tried it, too. In fact, the last time I listened to FM was when I was on Zeta. Sounded good to me. What are you laughing about? We had a... And by the way, Castro Nova, we had a big, big, big fat numbers in there, okay? Who the hell are you kidding? And we had, like, not just one show to compete with, which is all you got. We had, like, eight million shows. Neil wakes me up in the morning. In the morning. And then I tuck my pee-pee inside. Pee -pee. <laughs> I haven't played those in a long time. Of course, I'd rather hear. Neil wakes me up in the morning. In the morning. Neil wakes me up with a smile. With a smile, yeah. Drinking my coffee and munching on my donut. With you for a dime. Get ready, go to school with Neil. With you for a dime. What happened to the bird? How did you work in my room well. with Huh? What happened to the not not the bird? I mean, what happened to the cart, the cackle? It should be right there. Well, guess what? It's not, Mister. Matter of fact, I was playing it once when you were in Toronto. Yeah, right. I know that. I heard that, so I know that you were dicking with that cart. Okay, and that's so why when it's and, not here, and it would be there. Not, not here. Oh no. Anyway, now what was that in response to? I was in response to the fact that music on FM here sucks. But they have these amazing things called CDs, and once in a while you might buy one, then you can get like a rebate. In between downloading all the music for free from... Well, we're not suggesting that, but we know you're all doing that, okay? From Winmix and other others. What? What, what, do you, what do you... What is he going like that? Well, why is he putting his... Uh, I mean, they're all doing that already. Oh, he's... It, uh, it's not a secret. He's pining about I his CD rebate. I hate to break the news to you. It's not a secret, okay? That people, I don't want to mention any names, are downloading music uh, by the thousands and thousands and thousands of titles free from the Internet. And I, you know, whatever case, sera, sera. Here's a, a Paul who's just, uh, oh, you know who this is? This is New England Paul who's now just playing Paul. I should have known that. So there it goes. Bishop and Bush's church in new anti-war ad. The National Council of Churches will begin airing a television commercial today in which a bishop of the United Methodist Church, President Bush's denomination, says going to war against Iraq violates God's law and the teachings of Jesus Christ. How do you like that, huh? Well, I knew that. Yeah. Well, this is his uh, denomination. 
Ten bucks. So thank the Lord he's not letting uh, religion interfere with his choices. Jesus Christ. Sure. The 30-second ad schedule will appear several times a day over the next week on CNN and Fox. Unctuous fascist cable news in New York and Washington is part of an accelerating TV, radio, and print media campaign by Win Without War, a coalition of organizations opposed to invading Iraq. The choice of a Methodist bishop as a spokesman is intended to emphasize the opposition to war from America's mainstream churches and to convey that the peace movement is in the middle of the road and patriotic, according to Win Without War's national director, former Representative Tom Andrews, Democrat of Maine. Some national TV networks and local stations have rejected the anti-war coalition's effort to buy advertising time, citing the controversial content of its ads. The first spot, which aired in 14 cities beginning January 16, showed a little girl plucking petals from a daisy during a missile launch countdown, followed by a nuclear mushroom cloud. It was a remake of one of the most famous political ads in history, an attempt in 1964 by President Lyndon B. Johnson's campaign to portray his Republican opponent, Barry Goldwater, as a warmonger. What do you mean, an attempt? Oh, ho. And isn't it interesting, after uh, Goldwater lost that election, how all of a sudden he became so moderate and so uh, reasonable, huh? Just a man. Oh, speaking of moderate and reasonable, there's Tommy. He looks like he just came from uh, hell. No, you, you, I understand. Yeah, he calls it home. We all need the money on the side, especially when they work here. He's not walking around looking like that by choice, is what he's saying. He's walking around looking like that because he's in a band. Okay, here's the result of yesterday's poll, although I think probably we ought to do the break first, you know, so we don't have to interrupt ourselves in midstream. A lot of people out there, that's probably their problem, why their sex life isn't as good as, as it should be. Squirt, squirt. Because they have to keep interrupting in midstream, which is not easy to do, by the way. No. We asked yesterday, which of these statements best describes your sex life results to follow momentarily? So Lowry Mays and uh, a bunch of uh, lunatics up there say, oh, yeah, this is good for us. Uh, this is great. You asshole. God. Look at all the people who are out on the beach now, thanks to these monopolies. All the people in this industry, a lot of talented people who could be on the air entertaining you folks out there. Making a living. Making the radio dial vibrant and exciting again, as opposed to stale. And they're talking about deregulating even more. Why not just have Clear Channel own every radio station? There you go. Then everybody in the world can hear Lard Ass Limbaugh and Dr. Lore and all the other stale crap they got on there. There's only one show they got on Are you sure? that anybody would want to listen to, and that's Phil. And other than that, forget about it. Am I right? Yeah. What else do they got? Don't be selling me that Schmidt Schnitt by Meister, okay? Me? No, I'm talking oh. about that. Not, yeah, oh. you. <laughs> no, I'm talking about them. I've heard his crap, okay? And believe me, crap would be a compliment. Lardass Jr., Tampa Revisited. Oh, and, and not even good Tampa Radio, if there is, if that isn't an oxymoron. I mean, just just the same old stale stuff, you know? How come he doesn't go, la -da 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 -da? how come he ain't doing that? You know, pretty soon he will be doing it, like in a higher register. Like Gildy and Brian Craig. Seriously, what I heard on him, I, I still don't believe I really heard that. It had to be a dream, what I heard this morning. I think we call those nightmares. And Beth, the the tent lady, and and Moishi, and Boat lady. Joey, and oh. Hi, this is Brian Craig, and I'm here because Steve is on vacation. They had to separate us at the hip. They had to do an operation for Steve to leave the building without me. Yeah, Cal, I don't understand if uh, Mr. E goes on vacation. How would he go anywhere without his entourage? Maybe he had some fill-ins. To fill in? Or maybe they cloned Brian Craig. Maybe the Aurelians cloned him. Huh? A little bit too old now, Brian. Turn the clock back a little bit. Norm said you were pretty good. Hey, do you need car insurance? Have you gotten tickets in the past or had an accident? Do you have bad credit? If you answered yes to any of these things, call this number. one 506 7283 That's the number four. Florida First Insurance. They've got the car insurance policy plan for everyone, regardless of your past record. They've got low-down payments to catch you the car insurance you need for as little as 35 bucks a month. Call them now, 1-800, or I'm sorry, 1-888-506-7283. Same difference. 1-888-506-7283. Florida First Insurance offers free quotes. It's family-owned and operated, and they've been doing it a long time. You deserve the car insurance you're looking for, so call these folks now, one 888 Five zero six seventy two eighty three. If you need home insurance, life insurance, health or commercial insurance, Florida First Insurance can get your ass covered. And right now is a special promotion. Stop by any Florida First Insurance location, get yourself a quote, and you'll get two free casino cruise passes at the same time. Compliments of Las Vegas Star Marketing, a sixty dollar value, absolutely free. So call one triple eight five zero six seventy two eighty three. Get a car insurance quote from Florida First Insurance and get two free casino cruise passes. And don't forget, no matter what your car history record is. You have to call this number to get it all straightened out. Florida First Insurance for all your car insurance needs. 1-888-506-7283. Live, Live and local. We are Sports Radio 560. QAM. Wee wee. Hi, my name is... Excuse me. My name is. Can I have the attention of the class? Slim, sweetie. 
for what? That's it. Wanna get some nine inch straws and suck down some Mai Tais? I've been working out. Wanna feel my size? You'll fly high. How do you know if you never tried, guys? Tonight I got a date, and I'm trying to get my head straight, but I can't figure out which Spice Girl I want to impersonate. And Dr. Gay says, hey, Sweetie, you're a queen. Uh-uh. Look at that ween, boy. You're on the team. Well, since age 12, I felt up my first mail. And ever since then, never failed at chasing that tail. Got pissed off and ripped my ex-boyfriend's nips off. Kissed him and said, I didn't know Blitz deck made looks this off. Smoke a fat powdered pole, then paint on my mole. Orgasmic control is my ultimate goal. Come here, slut. Wait, get away from me. I'm your bro, dog. I don't give a fuck. I take them. So take your clothes off. Hi, my name is... Hi. My name is... Hi. My name is... Speaking of that, I don't know what was going on in this building this morning. I came in and Freaky Carlos was bent over a chair behind a reception desk. Anyway, here's the result of the poll from yesterday. Which of these statements best describes your sex life? Uh, speaking of that, 1,168 votes. Could be better, 199. Sensational, 190, 16.2%. Aren't we jealous of those 190 people? Aren't we jealous? Oh, assuming we believe them. Oh, hey, listen, it's all relative. Sensational means maybe they're getting laid once every six months. Who the hell right, knows? And maybe it's Who sensational. knows what they consider to be sensational? That's right. Who knows what kind of disgusting, hairy, grotesque-looking women they're sleeping with that smell real bad and have bad breath and <coughs> fart a lot? Who knows? Or guys. Let's see. Could be better, 199. Sensational, 190. Okay, 183. Could be a lot better, 182. Solo, 127, 10.8%. Non-existent, 97. Something of the past, 87. I'm desperate, 56. And weak, would you poo-poo that, 47. Even though it did come in last. Weak. I just thought it was too similar to another entry. Yeah. But whatever. Another, to another entry, is that another one of your little double entendres there? To another entry, as in... No, no which you seems to be you're that. obsessed with. Gutter brain. Not me. Here's a, So we got on our website also this column, which I'm not going to waste my time with, Nick uh, Christoph flogging the French. I'd rather... Uh, we do something else to the French begins with an F. But there is one interesting second paragraph. The European edition of Time magazine has been conducting a poll on its website. Which country poses the greatest danger to world peace in 2003? With 318,000 votes cast so far from all over the world, all over Europe, the responses are North Korea, 7%, Iraq, 8%, the United States, 84%. Ah! So when somebody tells you that the whole world hates us already and that if we start really doing wild and crazy things, they're going to hate us even a lot more, which makes our security and your very life worth a lot less. Don't poo-poo it, okay, like George is so quick to poo-poo things. You asshole! Yeah. Uh, you know something? I get. I think I get like a little tremor when I hear him say that. I, I'm, I'm going to admit it. I just get like a little, I don't want to say where, but... Rectum! Yeah. He uses that big announcer a voice. A quiver when he says... You asshole! Oh, man. Puts me in my place. Here's today's poll, which we thank uh, Chronic, a real sick person out there. I don't want to mention uh, Jeff High's former neighbor. I guess it shows that if you throw enough crap out of the air sooner or later, some of it will come down and hit the ground. Today's poll, movies that made cr men cry, but they won't admit it. Now, here's the list so far, most of which he sent. Now, where's the, where's the ones that we added? Any idea? None. Well, I've only got 6,000 uh, pieces of thing here in front of me here. Huh? Oh, here it is. Here's the, here's the ones we added. <laughs> well, it's only the one I added. Which is? Rain Man. Ah. It was pretty like had its uh, emotional it, uh, moments it there. It sure was. Anyway, movies that made men cry, but although I do admit it, see, it doesn't bother me. It won't hurt my image. E.T., Field of Dreams, Pretty Woman, Brian's Song, Schindler's List, Oh, have you seen that yet? Yeah. Driving Miss Daisy. It was really good. Rudy. Love Story. Rocky One. Isn't she dead? Adrian? Adrian. From Rocky? No, 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 no. Uh, Love Story. What the was her name? Ryan McNeil and... Uh, I can see her face. Well, that, now, see, that's bad. Oh, it's coming to me. I think she died. I don't think so. 
And doesn't I, he I have know. he has something like old age or something? Yeah, like he that? has old age. Ryan McNeil's got no. He's got some kind of a thing. Ryan McNeil and uh, something in Love Story. Come on, let's see who's got the worst uh, dead brain death disease. I can see her face right now. I'm right. looking at her. I see her. Uh, what's his name? Ali Ray, McGraw. Ray Milan. Ali McGraw. Very good. Ray Milan played the daddy. Remember that? No. Ray Milan played his daddy. No, I don't remember. The that. hard-hearted, nasty, miserable, obnoxious. You know how long ago? I think I was two. Well, that, I saw so that that's movie. good points for me. You got Ali McGraw. I got Ray Milan. And Carlos has got uh, Ryan McNeil, who's old and got something. Rocky won and Fatso. Now I put down Rain Man. And also, it's a wonderful life. Oh, I got my choice. And you know what? I do cry when I see Wonderful Life, but not during the movie. That's when I see it comes on my screen, then I change it. I cry a lot. I, I don't. It's. I didn't want to say it. Because Jimmy, I like Jimmy Stewart, like in Rear Window, and there were a few movies I thought he was very good in the Hitchcock movies, Rope. Oh yeah. But uh, it's a Wonderful Life. Is the, the was the stereotype of what right. Jimmy Stewart became? Da 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 da. da you know that yeah. stuttering kind of. Uh, I don't, I don't like that Jimmy Stewart. Every time you mention it, I keep jonesing for that bit we have. Jimmy Stewart screws who? Catherine Hepburn. No, now what? What a what kind of a thing is that? We got Jimmy and Danny. Funny. Jimmy and Danny. And now the sound of Jimmy Stewart making love to Catherine Hepburn. Funny one till uh, 11. Just got a phony uh, Brian Craig fax. Very bad, very weak phony. Uh, New England Paul speaking of phony fax. It says, don't know who sent that fax. You're right. Apologize. It wasn't me. It wasn't the New England Paul. If I want to get blamed for something or be called an asshole if I deserve it. You're right, New England Paul. So sorry. It was the other chronic Paul who's also becoming really even more chronic than New England Chowder. Brian Craig, by the way, is going to be taking over George's job starting Monday. So let's see. we got uh, a few here. Huh? And I'm sure we'll get a lot more of these. Real tear jerkers. Bon appetit. And, and from what I'm seeing here on our poll, there must be a lot of jerkers out there. Wouldn't you think? Since we're doing tear jerkers sure. today. So let's see, George again, you notice, you notice the pattern here? He conned me into playing that because I think he's getting paid off by somebody who doesn't want to see this show do too well. Getting me to uh, play all those unfunny comedy. I thought it was very amusing myself. I thought it was funny. I bet you Howard thought it was funny. Who? You asshole! Just relax, okay? Stop. Will you stop it? See, when you're on by yourself, you don't have the balls now that you got the new contract. That's not maybe. true. What? I said everything that was worth saying during those two weeks of uh, vacation. About what? December. About anything and everything. About him trying to get your ass fired? Yeah, yeah. And being a hard ass? Yeah. And having a bad hair piece? That too. And playing too much mahjong and shuffleboard? All of it. And wearing chuckered pants and having bad varicose veins and playing too much golf with old people in Boca? Carlos said, you never said anything about it. He's shaking his head. He said, never said a word. What would he know? Not much. Where's that sandwich, ponytail? Let's go. How hard could it be? We didn't have to make a big production about this. I don't want to sound pushy or ungrateful. But since I saw that, I should have taken Geldy's sandwich. You know what? Screw him. God, it's trying to stab my good friend Jugs in the back, trying to get that Panther play-by-play -play job. Hi, everybody. It's time for the Panther game. I mean, you know, what is that? What What is that? That was okay for Foster and Bill Hewitt, that high-pitched falsetto, you know. But, I mean, I, I don't think that's the sound that people want to hear on a sportscast. Do you? You think so? How would I know? Well, you better get with it, mister. You've been to a hockey game or two in your time. Right. See? Do you want to hear somebody doing play-by-play? -play? Who talks like that? I don't think so. So I'm, next time there's one out there, I'm going to eat Gildy's damn... Uh, uh, that's going to be my new diet, by the way. Other oh, Dr. Food? Bob was on the Donahue last night. I was one of the ten people watching briefly in between the hockey games. There was Dr. Bob on there, who looks very old, by the way. Your close personal friend, Dr. Bob Atkins? Yeah. Atkins is good. It really is. If you can do it. Uh, right. Yeah. If you can do it. Sure. I can't do it. I'm just telling you right now, I can't do it. He says, don't make excuses. That's your emotions, etc. I can't do it. I need yeah, but something. What if you... And how about if you... Sweet. Like maybe some of them calls or cough drops. Those halls uh, sorbitol. Oh wow! By the way, <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> nice job. Hey, I tell you, speaking of something sweet, and the Atkins dot, which I just got through telling you, is so good for a lot of people if they can do it. Delights of West Boca is a store that'll help you stay on it because other than just meat and cheese and lobster and steak and bacon and eggs, 
you know, it uh, even with all those things on there, it sounds great, but after a while it gets ponderous, repetitive. If you want to find zillions of other great things that are low in carbs and they're safe for that diet, the Lights of West Boca is like a, a find in the desert, like a miracle. They've got over 600 delicious low-carb food products all in this one great store. This week, try the sinfully low-carb loaf of delicious new bread with just three grams of digestible carbs per slice and the delicious taste of whole wheat bread. In fact, how come we don't have some of that? What did you do with that loaf that Petey Lenny brought in? That'd be great for like a grilled cheese sandwich with bacon. Took it home. You took it home? Was it any good? Yeah, that's all right. So whether it's Carbolite ice cream, breads, chips, muffins, cheesecakes, pasta, and sauces, Delight's West Boca is the place you'll find it, and you can try it before you pop it in your puss, or before you buy it. How's that go? they got an eligible staff open seven days a week from 10 to 10, and they carry the most complete line of Atkins products in the world that are always 25% off all day, every day. I'm sure you've heard the reports. Maybe you saw Dr. Bob on Phil Donahue last night. Maybe you wanted uh, Phil's 10 viewers. So if you're on Atkins and you want to get a whole variety of great things that are low in carbs and sugar, here's the number one low-carb sugar-free store in the universe, Delights of West Boca, and you'll find it on the northeast corner of Glades and 441, right next to Boston Market. Or call them toll-free at 1-877-LOW-CARB, or you'll find them on the World Wicked Wide Web at lowcarb.com. My and local. This is Sports Radio 560. QAM. Bastard. One of the most acclaimed films of our time is now the musical event of the decade. You put your left foot in, you put your left foot out. A story about what it means to hope. A story about what it means to hop. Starring Academy Award winner Daniel Day-Lewis. That's what it's all about. My Left Foot, the musical. Uh, you put your left foot back in, you put your left foot back out. My Left Foot, the musical. This time, he's putting his best foot forward. 1047, what, now what are you doing with my food? Jeff Cohen is here from the pizza loft who brought me the food. What, what are you doing there? I'm just, I like having a mess here, okay? I'm not turning the mic on, so just leave it up there. Eat your sandwich and uh, thank you very, very much. Where's this from again? Fried green tomato. Fried green tomato. Griffin and where? Griffin and uh, Pine Island. Thank you. It was very, very good. Grilled cheese on whole wheat bread with bacon. No butter. No butter. Going to be my new diet. So I'm going to eat his grilled cheese sandwiches with, uh, with or without bacon. What are you laughing about? On whole wheat bread. Now, granted, I'm not supposed to eat bread because it's high in carbohydrates, but, you know, this is whole wheat bread. And maybe George will bring back some of that uh, really great bread we were just talking about from Petey Lenny. That you... Oh. Anyway, here's a, a fax that says, The following two stories confirm suspicions of the Bush regime's fabrication of evidence. Look at that phone, by the way, with all the uh, suggestions on our poll. I've got many faxes, not one call on the board. Boy, you people are just stiff, you know? Don't look at us on this end of the show. This end of the show is cooking, man, is smoking. You people out there is as stiff as a piece of cardboard. You know what I'm saying. Of course, you can't knock them because they're your customers. By the way, Pizza Loft, two locations, Davy and uh, Plantation. Behind Walgreens. Right beyond Walgreens and Plantation. You can't see it from the street. Right beyond Walgreens, Knob Hill and Sunrise. It's great. Same great food as the other one and cheap prices and good food. What did I just say before? He got $80 million worth of free plug. That's why he's still in business. He voted on our poll yesterday said his sex life was uh, sensational. Don't have one. Yeah, don't have one anymore. Working too much. Since he got dumped by that broad from uh, Mayers. The following two stories confirm. Uh, we have Bush lying about the IAAEC. I don't think that's the right uh, uh, report that never existed. We have Bush repeating the firmly refuted nuclear aluminum tubes fabrications. And now there's evidence and has been for quite a while since the 1990 Defense Intelligence Agency report that Saddam did not gas his own people. How do you like that? <laughs> The lies are getting deep and dangerous. What do you mean, yeah, right? That he didn't gas his own. How do you know? And if he did, it was with our gas anyway. We gave him the gas. Yeah, well, who cares? We gave him Well, why do we... Why do we... Bomb and, what did we what did, and what did we say about it then? Did we say anything about it then? Was Rumsfeld over there shaking his hand and smiling and kissing his ass? That yes. Funny. Everything we did is bullshit. I mean, it's bad right now. See, it's a good thing his mic is off, okay? Okay. I don't really... You know, if we went over there and we, like, blew his brains out, that's fine with me. That's great. There should be no... But the, the, the idea that we're going to, like, start World War III, maybe, or God only knows, or instigate a whole bunch of terrorist crap and jeopardize the lives of not only our troops but all the American people is a little bit unnerving. But nevertheless, they took all that money and put it in why, why are you talking? Nobody can hear you. I'm not going to turn on your microphone. You want to start doing politics now? Do you want to start doing politics, Jeff Cohen, of the pizza loft with two locations in Broward County making a lot of money and great food? That'd be no, funny. no, 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 bad idea. No, I'm going to tell stories about you pretty soon. No, not a good idea. Are you starting to make trouble for the automakers now and for the right-wingers? Two movies, Cuckoo's Nest at the end when Nicholson has the lobotomy. I didn't find anything tear-jerking about Cuckoo's Nest. Did you? Even when the Indian ran out? 
I thought it was funnier than hell. When the Indian ran out, I thought it was uh, it, w- it was tear jerking. No. Why? Are you serious? No. Deer hunter, when Christopher Walken goes over the edge. I don't need you to show me how to eat a hand. That's because you piled these up on a plate, idiot. Could you please play the bit Santana plays guitar? I have no idea what that is. Is that in there, Santana? Now, are there napkins around here or something? Am I going to have to, like, smear up everything here and get it all oily? This is the only man in the world who can make, like, a major giant production about a, a, a cheese, grilled cheese sandwich. Which, not that I'm ungrateful. I appreciate it more than you'll ever know. But, I mean, a major, major production. Here's a good fact that's from the movie, Maven. It says, Allie McGraw's career died. She's still alive. We're building this pool, but, of course, uh, Carlos is doing everything but working feverishly on it. He's bouncing around. What's that? Now, now let him take care of it, okay? I don't want to sound ungrateful, but he's the food man. Like I said, thanks for bringing him in. He can't. I couldn't find one with a gun up his ass. Five six seven oh five sixty. We got two. Uh, enough napkins already, okay? Jesus Christ! How about Old Yeller? Says Sean. You know, Chronic Sean in Hollywood says, uh, or maybe it's another Sean. Old uh, Yeller. That's the classic. Uh, tier we got tier a couple tier of votes tier. for Old Yeller. Get that on there, Carlos. I'm not. I'm not writing any of these down. I'm busy eating. These great uh, grilled cheese, which I'm assuming you have to pay for. Oh, boy, well, thanks a lot. Huh? Well, it's for I bought a couple of grilled cheese sandwiches for like three and a half bucks, and I gave them already $5,000 worth of free advertising in ten minutes. And just started. Don't start with a policy, because it's not good for business. What? Hey, I'm, I'm, I don't know what it is. I'm jonesing for a grilled cheese sandwich. Which is a lot better than jonesing for like uh, yesterday. What were we talking about? S'mores? Oh, yeah. Ice cream and candy and all that crap. <laughs> Saw Dr. Bob last night. I'm thinking to myself, mask. Here's one that says mask and my left foot, which is why I just played that. Being the hard-hearted bastard that I am. Never saw either one of those. Mask, wasn't that Cher was in mask? Yes. She ought to be wearing one. Believe me. In fact, she should have shared it with her ex-husband. Look at, look at the response we're getting on the phone on this. See, I'm not going to, I didn't play the comedy bits 9 to 10 today. We might do it like 11 to 1. I, I, lo- I love these people that, like, give me all these instructions and lecture and faxes and you do this and you know. And, and look at the phone. It's the same old crap here. It's never going to change. Never going to change. Here's a call. And he, his cell phone is going off in here. Here's a call from Hollywood. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay. Uh, I have a film for you. I, I defy anyone not to uh, blubber like a baby when they watch this. And it's called My Dog Skip. It's a more recent film, but it's a real tearjerker. Oh, not about a dog dying. Yeah, yeah, it is. Dying dog will always make you cry. Uh, well, usually. Yeah. I, I have a question I for you, I have one that's coming up pretty soon, and I'm not so sure I'll cry too much. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, who the hell is Defo? Defo? Defo. There's these billboards. Defo. This guy with... Uh, he used to play in Def Leppard. Headphones. Who's Defo? Good question. We'll find out for you. All right, thanks. By the way, Cheap Channel owns them billboards. He don't work for them. They actually had to buy. And that's something. The light bulb had to buy those billboards or whoever he works for now. Now, the rumor is we're going to have billboards here. And it was supposed to be in January. But since today is the 31st, you see any coming over? No. That's the rumor. The same billboards they've been promising me since before Jesus was a baby. 5670560. Oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Try to build a pool and no response. Movies that made men cry, but they won't admit to it. It's a great poll, even though it came from this schmuck and he stole it off the Internet. It's a sensational poll. And you know what? They just won't admit to it. That's the problem. Here's Miami. Hello. What's up, Neil? Yes, sir. Hey, Jeff, stick with the magic show. That's first thing. That's right. Second thing No is, politics, man. Don't these right-wingers know as soon as that first bomb drops on Iraq, there's going to be terrorism, there's going to be terrorism all over the United States? Right, all over the world. I mean, this this is just ridiculous. This mm-hmm. guy is trying to find every way imaginable and make some up to just go after Iraq. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is just it, it's ridiculous. I mean, that's it. I'm going to the app to the mountains with George. Have a good time. Thank you, Andy. Say hi to uh, what's his name up there, Mark Furman. Al Qaeda is making dirty bomb. By the way, the BBC reports. British officials presenting evidence which they claim shows Al-Qaeda has been trying to assemble radioactive material to build a so-called dirty bomb. They revealed that Osama bin Laden's weapons program was further on than anyone thought. 
But I think we need to go into Iraq because we know that they have some ties. I love that line about, well, there were some Iraqi officials who were like that one that they uh, killed in Jordan. Once we're in Baghdad. I, I guess there were like, so we know that there were a lot of Al-Qaeda people in this country, huh, and probably still are. So why don't we just drop bombs on the U.S.? Ah, right. There you go. There's some ties. There's some ties there. We know they were in Buffalo. Let's drop some bombs on Buffalo. Oh. So I bet you we have a unanimous vote on that. I heard they were bow ties. Oh, I hope to, uh, the fall. I'll make sure the wind is blowing like south that day. I don't want it flowing up there to Toronto. It's too close. Yeah, we're invading Buffalo tomorrow, by the way. The French and Indian War, Part 2. Oh, look at that. I just spit a little sandwich right there at Jeff. Don't take it personal. Five six seven oh five sixty, and you notice that Eric is building the poll on there as we speak right along during the show. See, we're all on one page here on this end. The audience, by the way, still sit out there trying to figure it out, trying to figure out exactly. And you know who started it all? Good guy. We appreciate his listening all these years. What the hell was his name? The one who's uh, Pete, the KT listener, has been listening to me a hundred years. You asshole. My and local. This is Sports Radio five sixty. Q A Q A M. Friday, you bastard. Have you ever turned on the radio and said, that song makes me sick? Well, now, K.O. Pectate Records presents songs that make you want to throw up. Doctor, doctor, gonna up chuck on you. I got a bad case of stealing goo. Stay away, I'm a good for you. I got yes, on songs that make you want to throw up, you get sting. A complete Barfarama. And who could forget the classic? Puke, 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 puke and hurl. Puke, puke, puke and hurl. Puke, puke, puke and hurl. Puke, puke. You know you make me want to burn. I lose my groceries. I blow my chow now. I cut my cookies. I chuck my noodle. I eat on you, man. You're puking to the puking. Songs that make you want to throw up. You asshole. 1101 and 560 WQM. Happy Friday to you. Got a pristine lineup today. No ball games, no uh, Hazarai. Jim Maddich at 1, Hank Goldberg at 3, the uh, Hurricane Hotline at 7, the big oh. 8 to 10. <laughs> That's Orlando Alzaguri, and big is the operative word. Eddie K from GA at 10, and, G and oh boy, caught myself in midstream. By the way, happy birthday, Joe Costello. We forgot you yesterday. It's George's fault. Well, I wrote it on ESPN the calendar. radio over there. Yeah, and we, I said I saw it out of the corner of my eye on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So, I guess, you know, it's better to say it ahead of time, which we did on Wednesday, than too late. Right. It's like giving a birthday card to somebody a week after their birthday because you forgot it. It just doesn't have the same impact. You know, in fact, it, it makes you feel really bad. Like, you did this just because somebody told you it was my birthday and you missed it, and you really didn't care enough to send your very best in the first place, and you suck. You, uh... You asshole! Yeah. Here's a fax from a chronic who says, speaking of billboards... By the way, thanks again, Jeff Cohen from the Pizza Law, for great grilled cheese sandwiches, about ten of them. Good, good stuff. What do you say was from the fried pickle? The fried tomato? Fried to, uh, green tomato. Oh, fried green tomato. Don't be talking with your mouth full, mister. That's bad radio. Bad, right? bad, bad radio. Pretty soon you'll be working for Clear Channel for about buck and a half an hour. Pretty soon you'll be working for David Ross and all those other great... And Petey Bolger. You asshole. You know something? I, that's what I wish. I don't wish ill health on anybody, but you know what I wish? I wish that a certain somebody that works in the morning on this station would wind up working for Pete Bolger. Oh! Oh! I would constantly be like... Squirt, squirt. Down my pants. Squirt, squirt. All day long. Squirt, squirt. I'd be having like... Squirt, squirt. Spontaneous squirt, emissions. Squirt, squirt. Squirt, squirt. Anyway, speaking of billboards, I've seen way too much Schmidt, Schnitt, he's one hideous dude. At least one billboard with your old ugly ass in a pop outfit, it says. Yeah, with anything. Even in no outfit, just naked, anything. Not this outfit. 567 oh, 0560, pound 560. I'm not voting until we get the list completed. Then again, the thing is, which movie, uh, now what are we saying? What's your favorite movie that made men cry but won't admit it? It's, it's a, kind of awkward the way we're wording it, but how else do we do it? And the reason it was so hard to get them to call is because they don't want to admit it. And then there also has to be a category on there, Eric, uh, never cried at a movie. Okay? I'm sure that there are people out there, maybe even some women. Maybe. You want to have two categories? Like, I'm a woman who never cried at a movie, or I'm a man who never cried at a movie? We could make it gender neutral. I'm uh, not sure who I am, but I never cried Your at a movie. favorite movie that made you I'm a little twerp. I, I once sat at a movie with Brian Craig, <sighs> cried my eyes out, bawled my brains out. 
You, you did what with Brian? Bald. No, I didn't. Oh, I know. Norma. Uh, and what was I just saying? Okay, let's have two more categories. I'm a woman who never cried at a movie, and I'm a man who never cried at a movie. Just for those people who can't vote for the other ones. I'm not saying everybody cries in the movies, like a bunch of silly, uh, weak, emotional, you know, it's just a movie. It's just a movie. Lassie! Oh, no, Lassie! But he had to shoot Yeller. Yeah, I didn't see that. It was sad. Was it sad? I don't remember, but I was a little kid, so I probably cried. Oh, and speaking of people mistreating uh, dogs... Did you see that story on the news last night about that guy? Where was that? In Hollywood? With the two dogs tied to the tree, the two emaciated... No. Oh, and I got my fingers crossed that we don't get a phone call today. Two really nice dogs, young dogs. He had them tied up with rope. The one had the chain around the neck so tight. I mean, I, I, in the middle of my lunch, I don't want to tell you. how. And, and had fleas so bad that part of his ear fell off. And they arrested the guy. No food, no water. Abused dogs. I mean, just... I mean, how could anybody do that? Anybody. But anyway, I guess they're doing okay, and they were like had a big thing on the news, and they were, they're going to be adopted or whatever. They were in Coral Springs, some hospital up there. That lady, by the way, I'm always happy to help out, but don't push your luck, okay, lady? If I were a multimillionaire, I would just have a whole show here, and all I, well, I wouldn't have any show. I'd just be gone. But if I still was here, you know, assuming I was a schmuck, and all I would do is like have people call in for abandoned and abused uh, animals, and I'd like we'd raise money every day, and I'd write a check. See what I'm saying? Like that asshole, that right wing uh, schmuck. What's his name? Uh, Win so and so's money. What is his name? Ben Stein. Ben Stein. Oh, hey, Ben Stein. You asshole. God, do I despise him. Talk about an arrogant, egotistical schmuck. Ben Stein. You make me wanna, you make me nauseous. You wanna make me get my foreskin back. That's how much I can't stand you, Ben Stein. You asshole. Here's Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. All right, can you hear me okay? I'm in the car with this little uh, earplug, hands-free thing in my uh, in my phone. Here you're good. All right, listen, I got two uh, pretty good movies that made me cry at the end of them. Okay. Shawshank Redemption. Okay. And Gladiator. Gladiator? Gladiator with Russell Crowe. Right. At the very end, when he's dead and he sees his family, I thought that was pretty nice. And you cried? Well, you know, I'm not really cried, weeping cry. But a, a, little, a little, a little, a little bit of uh, you teared up a little bit, a little choking, yeah. choking up action. Yeah, I'll admit it. Okay, thanks a lot, pal. I, I cried right, during Gladiator, huh? starting at about the middle of it when I realized how to what a horrible Gladiator? movie it was, and then all the way, rest of the way through. Yeah. Now, who was in that? Peter North? Russell Crowe. Gladiator? Yes. He was. Ron Jeremy? And I, I said Ron Jeremy in the middle of my lunch, and I'm still uh -huh. eating. I didn't gag. Didn't gag, didn't choke, didn't... Because I'm trying not to think about it. How about uh, Randy West? Oh. Now, you interrupted me in the middle of a very important thought. Well, this guy was saying what? He gave Gladiator us two movies. Saw Shank Redemption. Saw Shank hey, Redemption. did you ever see that? Uh... No. No, sorry, Jason. And by the way, we don't want to see any more pictures of your excrement either. That was disgusting. It takes a, it takes a Polaroid snapshot of his uh, <laughs> J in the bull. The only thing I would like to see is OJ in the bull. I'd, I'd pay a lot to see that, like in pieces. Dismembered. Hey, OJ, we hate you, by the way, in case you had any doubts. Dismember here? No, that member over there. Here's Deerfield. Hello. Deerfield. Yeah, hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, two quick ones for you. And, 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 and let me interrupt you. And the good part of it is, unlike almost every other pool, if you have two or three, no problem, because we're not, you know, you can have, although we're saying, what's your favorite? That's what I figured. But that's okay. Uh, the first would be Terms of Endearment. Oh, with Shirley MacLaine? Yes, exactly. I'm crying just thinking about her now and her psychic readings. <laughs> and the second, for anybody who had ever served in the military, it's the more recent movie. It's with uh, Mel Gibson, We Were Soldiers. I cry a lot when I see Mel Gibson. <laughs> Thanks that a lot, heavy. pal. Have a great weekend. Well, I beg your pardon? We Were Soldiers. It was heavy. Mel Gibson. I, I don't watch Mel Gibson movies. He, no, makes, me, he makes my skin crawl. Nevertheless. I just don't like him. It was heavy. I like Gene Hackman. Yeah. I like Al Pacino. I like Robert De Niro. I like... Um, most of the actors and actresses. I like Karen Black with her crossed eyes. Robert Downey Jr.? No, I don't like Robert Downey Jr. Although he, now he was in a good movie. Oh, what was the name of the guy? Who, I can never think of his name. Sex, Lies, and Videotape. What was his name? James Spader. Very, very good. Oh, let's hear it for oh, George. Oh. Wasn't he in that movie? Yeah. He oh, no, did. it wasn't him. It was uh, that faggot. I mean, that... Uh, that good-looking young, uh, what, what is his name? See, all of a sudden I'm lost. This is bad for me because when you uh -oh. get to be this old. You're mixing your movies. 
Don't you know who played the villain in that movie James Spader was in where they were up on the roof and he was like toasting his girlfriend like a marshmallow? And he had her tied to that thing and he was about Did to... Did I see that movie? That was a good movie. The evil guy that came back to town in Chicago wherever and was... Uh, 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 well, see, the reason I paused is that we're both thinking real hard. Oh, I never as saw soon that as movie. I tell you who the other guy was, and I can't believe I can't think of his name. I, I would remember a movie where a uh, girl was being tortured on a roof. Yeah. I guess you never saw that. No. What's the name of it, Carlos? Look up James Spader on the Internet. Because how many movies did James Spader made? made you know? uh, uh, a lot. Too did many. He? Too many? Yeah. Why, you don't like James Spader? No, he was okay. Kind of he was no Christian Slater. Oh, was God, Spader, oh no. No. Slow burn? Slow burn? He's just looking up the database. So he's that might, I don't know. That might have been it. I don't it think sounds, so. If, if she's getting cooked on the roof, she was kind of like getting cooked on the roof, just like in uh, the, the Hitcher. Like she was like to be tied between uh, the two trucks. Jennifer Jason Lee. Kind of like the same thing. See Thomas Howell. See Thomas Run. See Thomas Naked. Five six seven oh five sixty. Pound five six. I can't believe I can't think of the other dude's name that's in that movie. They, I mean, it's uh, such an obvious. Keanu Reeves just came to me. See when you really? stop. Yeah, Ugh. he plays the bad guy. That would Whoa. make you happy. And in the end, Oy. right off the roof, I think, as I recall, pretty pretty tense oh, movie. Oh, thanks for ruining it for me. You're not gonna go see it. You're not gonna go buy that movie or rent that movie. You don't like no. James Spader. You hate Keanu Reeves, right? Which I'm not that fond of him either. See, the difference between not being too fond of an actor, actress, or having uh, disliking them so much you won't see the movie, like like Mel Gibson, like Leonardo. Yeah. I mean, he's just ridiculous. He, you know, he, right. there's, there's, well, what's the point? That, that's like the, he's like the rascal house of movies. He's just see, like that's, a, that's how I feel about stay, or, or like Sly Stallone. Oh well, that's another category. Is there enough money in in the world to pay us to go see a movie with Sly Stallone? Well, why don't they make uh, us an uh, offer and we'll absolutely. see? I mean, you want to know why there's so many dumb people in the world? Just go see a Sly Stallone movie. Yo, they, Adrian. I mean, that, that's it. That's him. Yo, Adrian. That, that's it. It's all there is. He makes O.J. look like a great actor. Well, at least he was in some funny movies. Naked Gun, wasn't he a Naked right. Gun? And Leslie Nielsen, good Canadian boy, by the way. I just spit out a little piece of my sandwich. 11 past 11 at 5.60. And let me tell you, if you want to put something good in your puss that's good for you, how about Oleomed? Oleomed's Mediterranean formulas are advanced combinations of pharmaceutical-grade olive oil combined with lots of really good healthy stuff. There are vitamins, minerals, herbals, and other nutrients in there, scientifically designed to provide natural nutrition solutions to help you support specific health needs. Look for Oleomed's three new formulas, which are sleep, weight management, and CoQ10. Oleomed also has supplements to promote health in your circulatory or digestive, your endocrine system, your skin, your bones, even your mind all using the benefits of the finest olive oil known to man and woman. And Oleomed has products both for men and women, too, by the way. Oleomed is an outstanding product, and you can pick it up all over town. Find some at Publix, Eckerd's, Whole Foods Markets, and Walgreens. For more information, call their uh, toll-free number, and they'll tell you what it's all about and where you can put it. 1-866-OLEOMED. That's 1-866-653-6633. And, of course, you can always order their products on their website, oleomedamerica.com. And during football season, dolphin season, which is only 20 or 30 months away, don't forget to visit their sampling pavilion at Sports Town every Sunday. Start feeling great today with the help of Oleomed. Live and local, this, this is 560. The radio is all yours now. QAM. Shut up, Nippy Cut! Can Joe Rogers take a mouthful of the sausage and whore haze pan? That pipe smoker and uncircumcised Q will bend engage in a fecal dance. I'm a cranky homophobe. Not that I mind it, but I'm way too old. I fantasize about being in bed in a tryst with Fiedler, my man friend. I'll kiss and make up with Ginger someday. And then ask him to rape my bun over and over again. Though I would not feel remorseful. No! And I would not be ashamed about a ginger and mo gay union. 
Just boning and stroking away. What's next, dead baby? Boy, baby, Kelby, you're not my type. No. You sound like a nine-year-old kid. Hey. The only a macho, manly kind. You don't notice. That makes me flip my wig. If Ginger was a lover of mine, gang rape is funny. I'd bury my bulbous, veiny nose inside his pimply rear end. No, I would not be a sport hole. No! If I was not a closet of fay. That's why a Ginger and Moe union would make me feel giddy and gay. Everybody follow my thousand pools. Yeah, Ginger and Mo Gay Union would make my sore old bony ass feel safe. If we had a Ginger and Mo Gay Union, then he wouldn't have to get me raped. You asshole. 1118 at 560 WQAM. See, the reason I couldn't think of it was Judd Hirsch. You want to know why? Taxi. Tony Danza. Last name reminds me of Mitch Hirsch. Oh. So I have a mental block. Anyway, there's a movie called Without a Trace. That's a great movie. I mean, very depressing and very sad. Put that on there. You got it? And what's her name that plays? Uh, she's a great actress that plays the mother of the little kid. Well, now look it up on her. You got it. You already checked that out. And Judd Hirsch is in there. And he plays the cop that eventually he eventually finds the kid in the end, by the way, up there in New England somewhere in some little town in uh, Connecticut. And the old bra that's got the kid, she reminds me of um, Beth's mother on Passions. By the way, she's not dead. Mrs. Wallace ain't dead. See, I just spoiled it for all the Passions people. That's okay. They like a little bit of... They know that anyway. If they killed her off, that would be the end of that show. Well, Missy. Uh, she's the best. She's absolutely the best. What's the name of the uh, actress? Barbara Hershey? No. Barbara Hershey. Are you off your Somebody rocker? said. No, not Barbara Hershey. It's not even close. Yvonne what now? Yvonne Elliman? Yummy? No. Jenny yummy? McShane. Yummy, yummy? No. Jenny McShane? Well, what? Are you looking He's for Without a the Trace? Entire cast. She's the star and of the without movie. Without a Trace. Without a Trace. Marissa Tomei? No. Barbara Billingsley? Barbara Billingsley played June, and uh, Hugh Beaumont is Wally. I mean, is the uh, dad. And Tony Dowd. Here's one that says, I'm sorry to bother you. It's from Michelle. The answer is 1-800-248-5071. She wants the number for Kate dark Nelligan. concepts. What? Kate, Kate Nelligan. Nelligan. See, what's wrong with you? That's a Kate Nelligan. Man. 1-800-248-5071 for dark concepts, Michelle. 1-800-248-5071. 248-5071. Got it? There you go. They're great. Thanks, Michelle, for asking. They'll do you a good job. Here's one that says, I tear up at the end of movies all the time, but some of my favorites are. And this is from Brian in Washington, D.C., who says he's listening over the Internet. Dead Poet Society. I cried all Robin Williams yeah. movies. You want to know why? Because he's in them. Because uh, he's in them. Oh, well, it, it's so sad. Uh, Big Daddy. I beg your pardon? The Adam Big... Sandler movie? I don't I don't know. I never saw that. I don't like Adam Sandler either. Oh, you don't like anybody. Adam Sandler's a hoot. He's about as funny as having cancer in every toe. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Adam Sandler. I mean, see, that's another thing that makes me like an old fart. And I'm happy. I don't want to be cool. I don't want to be hip. I don't want to put on an act. I'm an old fart, okay? But yeah. down here, I'm still like a teenager. But Adam Sandler, it, it, it's got not a generation. I think Mike Myers is hysterical. He's he very is. funny. Of course he is, and he's a good uh, But Adam Sandler's writer. not funny. He's not. You know what? That movie was sad. He's an really, idiot. Really sad, that movie, Big Daddy. What was it? It was said that they made it into a movie. It was a glorification of this asshole's aberrant antisocial behavior. Yeah. Home invading, assaulting people, and making him a hero out of it because of it. That's what that movie was. Crimson Tide. Huh? <laughs> That's what it says here on this list, okay, from Brian and Washington. Crimson Tide. Is that oh, a science fiction? I don't know. Put it down there, okay? Elizabeth and a few others. And then he says, and it gives us a lot of idea where Brian's coming from, Here's an idea for a poll. Your favorite male porn star. See, Brian, I hate to break the news to you, but other than you, we have like maybe four or five fags listening to the show. That's number one. And number two, as far as the heterosexual male population, which is the overwhelming majority of this audience, I don't think most straight guys care about who the guys are in a porn movie at all. Right. Good call. Huh? We don't even want them in there. 
as if we had a favorite? Oh, no, that's right. Most guys would prefer there wouldn't be nothing but lesbian scenes, but the, you know, the guys will be there just gratuitously for like a little squirt, squirt. shot or something else to keep the uh, babes all worked up. Ugh. And speaking of that, Bob the Builder says, w, uh, Debbie Does Dallas made me cry because I had a cast in my hand the time I saw it. He only has one hand? Debbie Does Dallas. He's not ambidextrous. Debbie Does Dallas was a great porno movie. With never ba saw it. Bambi Woods. Boy, see, now there's a memory. You never saw Debbie Does Dallas? Now, never saw If you don't think, you thought, you thought that Brittany was hot, okay? Bambi Woods ain't far in her behind, okay? She's right there. Now, it's old, but I bet you you could still find it. I'm sure. Debbie Does Dallas. That, that's a classics, long time ago. Oldies. Yeah. Maybe on a reel. Trying to think who else. Well, the usual cast of Mr. In fact, they see, the problem with the male porn stars in those straight movies is that it's the same eight people. But they're like nasty prison escapees with the jailhouse tats and the greasy hair. No, long ago, there, there were maybe a couple of guys that looked human. Back when, before Tom Byron decided to become a freak and wanted to be like a remember. John Holmes part two. Huh? I don't remember that. Tom Byron? I don't remember any attractive male. It's not true. Not ugly not male. Not true. Nasty, not true. big nose Harry Reams. Not true. Uh, Harry Reams was in like one movie. He was in Deep Throat. Yeah, that's the one I saw. And that wasn't his name. That was just uh, an act. If Harry Reams does Bambi, well, whatever. Yeah, she would. Five six seven oh five sixty. We're building the list on here. And, of course, if Eric would put Rain Man on there, then I could vote. I don't want to get pushy, Eric, but and he has no way of knowing that because you haven't faxed him the rest of the list yet. See, I'm I'm looking at it this way. Since this is the poll for the weekend, there's no emergency on here. And of course, and now Carlos is going to have to leave early today because he's got to go to the bank and uh, give him a bunch of pennies and try to cover that bad check. I mean, and now what time are you leaving? About noon? About ten minutes from now? Any minute? So this is going to huh? It's going to fall on your. Uh... Oh, there he goes. What's the big deal? Okay. I'll tell Clarence to cover it. My vote for the saddest movies are E.T. We had that terms of endearment. So did we mention Without a Trace with Kate Nelligan? There's a movie. Isn't there a, a, a some show on TV now called Without a Trace? Yeah, that's got nothing to do with that movie. They just stole the name. Now you've seen that, right? Yeah. And the little kid disappears, and then they think that uh, fag. I mean that uh, worker or whatever the hell he was, the handyman did it because he was gay. And they found the soiled, bloody panties, and he turns out he cut his hand in the sink or whatever. Kind of like O.J., you know, I haven't seen everybody that cut their hand in the sink. Right. And then come to find out that old bag had kidnapped that little kid. And at the end of the movie, she's coming home with her groceries in her arm and that dog. I think it was a golden retriever, wasn't it, the dog? Who played the dog, by the way? Look that up, Carlos. Lassie. And Lassie was not a golden retriever, okay, mister? I know. God! Street Magnolias, what do you say about that? Never saw it. And Tracy and Kendall says the saddest part is I actually saw these. <laughs> I never saw E.T. Does that make me a bad guy? No. Makes you lucky. Well, it, it, I, was, it was good in its time, but... Hokey. Yeah. Hokey, okay? Oh, hokey, 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 hokey. That's all it is. Hokey. That's all you know. What's this obsession with hokey? Virginia pleads, pleads, uh, pleads guilty to abusing boy. Uh, oh, yeah, we had this story on this guy before. Earlier. A Roman Catholic priest pleaded guilty today to sexually abusing a 14-year-old boy in 1982 was given a suspended 20-year prison term, suspended a sentence. Prince George County Circuit Judge told the Reverend John P. Blankenship that if he misbehaves during that period, he would impose the entire 20-year sentence, the maximum allowed by, in the, for, the four, uh, for the four courts. The prosecution said the crimes took place between June 82 and November 82 when the victim and his mother went to the Church of the Sacred Part, a heart in Prince George County to do housekeeping chores. The attacks occurred when the boy was left in Blankenship's care. And so he gets a suspended a sentence. How do you like that? What a joke. Well, we heard from the Vatican that they get one freebie anyway, don't they? As long as it's not passionate. Here's one that says, I was mistaken about today's survey. I never saw my husband cry during stepmom and would never admit it. Thanks, says Tracy and Kendall. Well, Tracy and Kendall just cry up. She may drown in her own tears like Alice in Wonderland. Like Alice at the Palace. Five six seven oh five sixty. See now we're getting this going a little bit. I like the way we did the show today, by the way, so far. What are you looking at me? I'm just I'm just telling you it worked for me. As opposed to I mean you like the comedy bits because then you just sit back there and bull crap with him all the end of the whole hour. And, and it's like a it's like a freebie hour. The web. Like you want to get paid for just sitting there on your ass talking to somebody. Yeah, could I? Like me. 
27 after 11, although I think I may be talking to a few more people than you. Not necessarily that many lately. But Hey, do you need car insurance? Have you gotten tickets in the past, had an accident? Do you have really bad credit? Yes. If you answered yes to any of these things, call this number, one 506 7283 That's the number for Florida First Insurance. I'll never eat a grilled cheese sandwich again, by the way. It was very good. But in other words, I got my fix. Do you follow what I'm saying? No. What are you saying? No more. No mas. Anyway, Florida First Insurance has got the car insurance policy plan for everybody, regardless of your past record. They've got low down payments, can get you the currency you need for as little as 35 bucks a month. So call them now, 1-888-506-7283. I would have sworn I saw Petey Lenny stick his head in there. And you didn't slam the door fast enough, Carlos. Idiot. Florida First Insurance offers free quotes as family owned and operated with years of experience. You deserve the car insurance you need, so call them now, one 888 506-7283. If you need home, life, health, or commercial insurance, Florida First Insurance will get you covered. And don't forget, right now is a special promotion stop by any Florida First Insurance location. Get you a quote and get two free casino cruise passes, compliments of Las Vegas Dell Marketing, a $60 value, absolutely free. So call one 506 7283 Get a car insurance quote from Florida First Insurance and get two free casino cruise passes. Don't forget, no matter what your car history record is, call one 888 Five zero six seventy two eighty three. That's one triple eight five zero six seventy two eighty three for Florida First Insurance for all your insurance needs. We're Sports Radio five sixty QAM. Eisner. Back in the day when someone done us wrong, we didn't take their crap. In Pearl Harbor, when the Japs dropped their bombs, we bombed them back. And now the Saudis, they hit us hard. And on our cars, our little flags wave. As that Saudi loving retired voice of bombers the wrong way. Yeah. And I'm embarrassed to be an American Where they follow Bush like sheep The United States of arrogance Led by Bush and his family Green, they got this country up Handling towards the darkest days in our history I don't want to be a Pax American In the goddamn USA What's a few thousand innocent lives? Stop living in the past. If you want that SUV to drive, you're gonna need more gas. It's the greatest country in the world. They train us to believe. And anyone who says that, obviously, can't afford to leave. And I'm embarrassed to be an American Are you Where we patriotically Wave a flag in one hand With our head in the sand And blindly follow the powers that be Apathetic Up watching state from you Who's on a 65 inch screen Scratch her balls and fart Everything's okay In the goddamn USA Gulf West <laughs> Got the majority leader and a distinguished senator like uh, Senator Feingold. T- 26 till noon. I just That's as much as I can take, you know. Had to have the president as a guest on our show today for a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds. How about the champ with Rick Schroeder? And I was telling Jeff Cohen as much as, uh, of course, he don't care, but I actually saw Rick Schroeder on some where I was channel surfing the other day. In fact, maybe it was yesterday. I don't know what it was in, a show, a movie, or what. And he uh, actually looked uh, almost human. Rick Schroeder. Just, okay. turned, just turned 62, but it didn't look too bad. Because in the past, I always found him extraordinarily unctuous and unacceptable. Wasn't he in that movie with uh, Brad Pitt? Yes. <laughs> he played his brother, The Other Side of the Tracks, or whatever that movie was. That's it. Was that the name of the movie? Something like that. Other Side of the Tracks, The Other Side of the Tracks. How do you like that? Them, their tracks. Now, when we go back to the poll the other day about the hottest person in the world, I'm going to tell you Brad Pitt in that movie, see? In that movie. That's a long time ago. You just Before... like that underwear scene. Yeah, I, of course. Listen, if it would have been like uh, a fat rich in his underwear, I don't think I would have enjoyed it. So a lot of people, it could have been people in their underwear. That's not the point, in their fruit of the loom. 
Anyway, yes. we're doing uh, your favorite. How are we wording it? What's your favorite movie that made men cry, but they won't admit it? That's a very good way of wording. Who did that? Did you do that or Eric? Carlos. Carlos said he done it. Eric says, on the other hand, ordinary people. Did we already do that? With Mary Tyler Moore, that one. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't yeah, see it. I, I, I cried that I spent money to go watch it because people told <laughs> me it was a good movie. Sucker. Oh. You spent oh. money to go see a movie with Mary Tyler's Moore? Holy crap, man. You're like uh, not too sharp lately since all the pressure started getting to you. You know what I'm saying? You asshole. God. What a waste of a budget. Death not be proud with Robbie Benson. Huh? Speaking of people that used to look really, really good. What was that movie, One on One, where he played the basketball player? I guess that was. And told it. the coach to stick it up his ass with the red hot poker or something like that. Doth not be proud. Robbie Benson. Had a heart attack. He's still Jewish. He's still circumcised. He still looks the same. He's like 71 now. Still looks the same. He has a wife, you know. Uh, yeah, and was there ever any. Did anybody ever accuse him of being. He was never faggy, no. okay? No. He was just cutesy. I mean, almost to the point cutesy of being, uh, like, uh, annoying. You know what I mean? Yeah. He married the chick from the meatloaf video. Yeah. You know, the one in the white tank top? Or and? Nothing. And? Just mentioning. Here's uh, somebody. we got several for Tom Hanks movies, which uh, my stomach is churning now. It's either from the grilled cheese sandwiches or from some, or both. Tom Hanks in Philadelphia, where he played the AIDS patient, didn't see it. This is after Tom Hanks started to take himself seriously, which nobody else in the world really does. And also we had one for Forrest Dump. We had two votes for that. Put it down. Don't give me like a look like that, because life is like a box of <laughs> Schmidt. Isn't that what those billboards say? Life is like a bunch of Schmidt. Tom Hanks in Philadelphia and also Forrest Dump. He started taking himself serious. I'll say it again. Now, who, who, is with, who is the abroad that was in that movie? The um, In Forrest Dump? Not in Forrest Dump, in a bathtub movie, The Mermaid. What the hell was her name? Daryl Hannah. Darryl, oh, what's Daryl Hannah? Sure. Oh, and I'm asking you, what was her name? I'm embarrassed about that. I know my Daryl Hannah. I know uh, Hannah and Barbera, too. Daryl Hannah and Tom Hanks, that was his speed. That was right up his... He was just fine right there, you know? Stick. Big, that movie. Stig, where he plays the little kid. Didn't see that. It was all right. Oh, I, I, oh, that's right. He played the little kid who was, like, old. Or swapped bodies or something. He, he, Yeah, the little kid that he wished that he was big, so he turned into an adult. I but do, too. Little, yeah. I wish I was big. Here's Mike the Chronic, who says, Where can I find the pool you mentioned about the U.S. being the greatest threat in the world? Is it available online? What's the source? Well, I'll tell you. Ask the right person, Mike, because you can go to neilrogers.com, and I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you which one of our bedtime stories, and I wish a lot. I keep telling you this every single day. We love having you go to our uh, website to vote on the poll. That's one of the ideas. And, of course, because of AOL sucks, only a very tiny fraction of the people are actually able to vote. The rest can see the result. But underneath the poll... Clear Channel Defense Radio uh, Biz on Capitol Hill, which we read a little bit of, flogging the French. And I say again, uh, do something else that begins with an F to the French. Empty Promises. All Bush Wants is Iraqi Oil, says Mandela. The Bishop in Bush's Church in New Anti-War Ad. Cheney says survival of civilization is at stake, and so is a lot of oil, too, by the way. Lack Security, Miami International, fake IDs pass uh, perusal, which was on the front page of the Herald today. Al-Qaeda was making dirty bomb. That's from the BBC. L.A. County uh, begins smallpox vaccination. So, in other words, we didn't put it on there? Flogging the French is the one you... Oh, that's you right. Know. Excuse me. Well, how the hell am I going to know from the name of the article, see? So, it's a good thing Mike the Chronic asked. Flogging the French by Paul Krugman in the uh, New York Times. Or was it Nicholas Kristof? One of those guys. One of those Schmidt disturbers. And you'll find it in the second paragraph. You won't have to look too far. Poll in Time Magazine in the European edition... They interviewed 80 trillion people, and like uh, everybody except like four or five said, we're a scared of George W. and the USA. He used to be our friends. They used to be okay. We like to overcharge and gouge him a little bit. But other than that, we you know, never stole a freight train. But now we're a scared of the good old USA. Just a tr Here's uh, Jennifer in Miramar says, how about the killing fields? How about peppy fields? Strawberry fields. Forever. Sally fields. She bothers me, Sally Fields. Yeah. I mean, Annoying. I don't hate her or nothing. No, no, I don't hate her. You know who she reminds me of? And in Sally fact, maybe Fields? she's actually married to him. Kurt Russell? Who's Kurt Russell married to? He was married to Was he married to Goldie, Goldie Hawn? Hawn? Are they still? No, he's still married to Goldie Hawn, Kurt Russell? And you want to know, there's one thing I think of every time I see Kurt Russell. You know what it is? Eisner? Walt Disney. Sure, me too. 
Mickey Mouse. Eisner. Like those tough movies that he made, like Escape from New York. I like Goldie Hawn. Dexter Riley. I like Goldie Hawn a lot. She's married to Kurt Russell. She was. Eisner. She is. What? And I think she still is. She was. She could do a lot better than that. I mean, you know, maybe maybe he's a wonderful guy. You know, maybe he's well endowed. I don't know. Although he's still kind of Eisner. Mickey Mouse to me. So anyway, we got that. Kelly Fields, do we agree with that? She says, what a fantastically sad movie. How could you not cry through a end of the end? Let's see. We always, Eric's building this now. I'm a man who never cries at movies. I'm a woman who never cries at movies. Good work there, Eric. Look at all the, look at all the uh, days that we're adding to Eric's life as he's now building this. Now I can vote for Rain Man. Thank you. Rain Man was good. That's when Tom Cruise could act. And you still never saw Born on the Fourth of July. Or Schindler's List, or Shawshank Redemption. Not, not those the same three. things. I'm, I'm just saying, things. those three. Sue me, okay? I never saw those three movies. Is that okay? But if you thought he did a good acting job in Rain Man, he blows himself away in Born on the He Fourth does what? July. You always say that. Best acting job You always ever. use that expression, and I start thinking about Ron Jeremy again. Best acting job by him ever in his history, in his career. By Tom Cruise? By Tom Cruise. Now, that's not saying an awful lot. He walked through Rain Man. In other words, there was no frisky business? No. I mean, that movie was cute. Although, well, I'm not going to win it. It was cute. He was adequate in Rain Man. He was spectacular in Born on the Fourth He was not adequate in Rain Man. Well, he did a really good job. Although, better. you know the problem in Rain Man is he played himself again. That's just it. He played that stereotypical that Tom Cruise rule. He's on the phone. He's Mr. Cool. He's got the shades. But, you know, I, he played himself. I never would have thunk it. They had to threaten me. They had to hold a gun to my head to watch that movie. And they were right. It yeah. was good. 18 till noon at 560 WQM. When you left the car this morning, did you notice how schmutzy your car was? I mean, really filthy. You didn't have time to wash it. Those so-called car washers at gas stations can't get it done the way you want. Here's a great idea for you. Take your car this weekend to University Car Wash and Lube on University Drive between Sterling and Griffin Roads in Davie. They do it all for you. Full-service washers, deluxe washers, hand washers, complete detail, and rug shampooing, too. Right now at University Car Wash and Lube, you can get unlimited full-service car washes. Wait till you hear this. For as little as thirty-two ninety-five for the entire month. Let me say it again. Just thirty-two ninety-five. You can get it washed every day if you like. Need an oil change? Get a complete quality Pennzoil oil change and free full-service car wash for only twenty-two ninety-five when you sign up for their free preferred customer card. So keep that new car shine all winter long only from University Car Wash and Lube. If you're a snowbird and need to get that car looking brand new again, stop by at University Car Wash and Lube. This weekend, get the... Oh, you know who was on Larry King last night, by the way, speaking of your voice cracking? Paul Harvey. Good. No wonder they're getting those demographics down there. I saw that for about four seconds as I was channel serving. Paul Harvey. Good. I'm Larry King. And were, they, the camera crew was taking uh, uh, bets. They were taking odds on who was going to croak first right on the camera. So this weekend, get the schmutz and grime off your car by stopping by University Car Wash and Lube. They're the best in the universe. University Car Wash and Lube, and you'll find them on University Drive between Griffin and Sterling in Davie. Live and local. This is Sports Radio 560. QAM. Spread and say cheese. On the good ship. On this dud, it's a slave ship, and it's very hot when you row all day, and they whip you on the back with chains. <laughs> it's a wooden ship, and it smells a lot like an armpit or a bad egg fart, and when you die of disease, they throw the body in the sea. Hold no toilet bowl, your pillow is a rat. And if you complain, oh no, white devil beat you with the rusty chain. On a slave ship, they don't serve no food. When you get seasick, they feed it back to you. Life is very hard on the good ship of a star. Okay, here's one uh, fax that just says in big letters, Amistad. Do you see it? Was it sad? Depressing? It was sad. Morbid? How about the great Santini? That was pretty depressing. Did it make you cry? No. Uh, let's see. Look, and look what I got here. You're not going to believe this. Look at this. Look it's at red. what just... Huh? It's red. Yeah, and you know what it is? A folder. Mm, nice folder. See, I don't really care. They're trying to like uh, Israel and uh, Palestine and Israel. Blah, 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 blah. And this one wrote a book in the Spanish Inquisition. Yeah, well, great. 
I don't care about any of that, or this book, or the author, but it's another nice red folder. Sure, it's replace glossy. Mine, it's like getting worn out. Right. So we're going to have like, in fact, I'll just write Toronto on this one. This is my Toronto folder, and the other one's my Miami folder. Isn't that great? Oh, let me take all the crap out of it, too. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't care about this. I don't care about that. I, I hope they're not listening, whoever went to all the trouble to send me these pages. and Don't care. Ah, beautiful. What a great day. Free grilled cheese sandwiches for lunch from uh, Jeff Cohen. A beautiful red folder and a poll that's smoking, starting to smoke. Fifty votes on there. It just went up. Eric just got it up moments ago. And the poll, too. Uh, let's see here. We got one woman who never cries in movies, and we got seven men. Do you believe that? Never cries at movies. Okay. I mean, we've got to take your word. Brian's song got seven. Old Yeller's got six. Schindler's List got five. E.T. four. It's a wonderful line. That's changing again. Now, see, they know what's up there. It's going to be changing like like wildfire. Brian's song's got ten. Old Yeller six. It's a wonderful life four. Dead Poet Society three. And everything else, small potatoes. It just got on there. NeilRogers.com. Here's the world according to Garp with Robin Williams. It says, "Made me cry." All right. How about that doctor movie, Patch Adams? Wouldn't that make you cry when you see a guy like that with a playing with a clown nose? Yeah. Oh, here's the doctor's going to save my life. I, my last breath, and a guy walks in with a clown nose on. I guess you can't take that quite too seriously. <laughs> Catch my drift. And not only has he got a clown nose on it, make it even worse. It's Robin Williams, who's still talking in that same. He's still doing that same shtick. He's uh, does, does he ever? No, no he oh. never. He's always on. I'm not too big on people who are always on. I am Sam with Michelle Pfeiffer and Sean Penn. Says this fax. I am Sam. It's about the retarded guy with the kid. I, I don't know. Do you, you think I saw that? I watched the first 30 seconds of it and uh, Did you cry? changed it. Well, I was starting to, so I changed it really quickly. <laughs> well, I guess it fits that. Put it down there. I am working. That's, that's all it is. It's just from the very beginning. Tear jerking? Yanking, yanking your heart. Well, there are a lot of people like yanking. Right. Yeah, okay. what's fun about that? Good morning, Neil. How about these two? Green Mile, it says, my husband cried. And I think there might be a little bit of a typo here. It says, Kramer versus Karmer. That was a good movie, by the way, Kramer versus Kramer. Right. With Al Pacino? Or was it Dustin, Dustin Hoffman? Hoffman? Well, see, they're the same person. And Meryl Streep. No, I don't like her. Yeah. Meryl Streep gives me the creep. Huh? You like Meryl Streep? Yeah, she's kind of like, I don't know, too skanky. Scr- I don't know, it's something about her. Skinny nose. The whole thing, yeah. Uh, green person. Green Mile, got that. And Kramer versus Karma, a uh, Kramer. That's Brad Kramer against Harry Kramer. The champ, did we got did we got the champ, right? There it is. Old Yellow we got. My dog Skip. Oh, John in Lake Worth says my dog Skip. And speaking of love story and Ryan O'Neill, Ryan O'Neill in the Pride of the Yankees. The Lou Gehrig story, where he comes out there at... First base in a microphone and says, Today's the long, the luckiest man. You know, that's, you know the one where he says, I'm the luckiest man. Even though I'm like dying over here, I got this Lou Gehrig disease. Oh, man. Hey, here's the facts from Pete from Kendall. I saved it. And here's the one that says, Have you ever seen Brian Craig and Gildy in the same tea room together? 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. One thing we do know is that Gildy has got a much larger penis than Brian Craig. Because the sports people around here have to shower together at the end of the day every day. Norm seen Geldy's too? No, only Brian's. I checked with everybody else around here. They went like this. Arms extended wide. Here is Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, how you guys doing? Okay. Good. All right, I got two of the all-time movies. I would consider definitely God for cries at movies. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's the other one? I don't know. He'll call back. His phone crapped out. You're making fun of the guy because his phone crapped up. It was very amusing. Well, maybe he's crying. You know, maybe he's crying into his phone. Your phone crapped out. Call us back. Believe me, we're not trying to make fun of you, although it was kind of fun making fun of you. 5670560. Look, the, the, let's face it. The state of the art isn't so great. The state ain't so great because it's Florida, you know? But maybe someday we'll be able to have, like, cell phones that really work. And then, of course, that's when they'll ban all use of cell phones and cars altogether, and we'll be out of business. Five six seven oh five sixty, and it's you know it's a good thing I got practice on those bedtime stories, you know, and I'm no dummy. High speed chase with a postal truck in Miami on Fox News. Yeah, we don't care. I don't turn on Fox News on my TV. It, it has an automatic shutout. Won't it won't bring it in. Oh, it's on all the local channels too. Oh, which is on channel four, which is on three. Are you saying? Yes. 
I don't see nobody on the... Huh? What are you talking about? Channel 3. Oh, there it is, mail truck chase. So it's probably the safer course. Um, he's probably getting desperate. He's probably made threats. It's probably what we've heard. None of the, none of the mailman going. Tony, you, you've Postal, been involved in it? a lot of these, and I'll ask you a hypothetical. Have you ever been involved in a, in a situation like this? Oh, I sure hope he's not listening to this show. I mean, we now know that the, met, the Come on, Metro pal, pull over, okay? police chopper wants to stay over top of this vehicle. But we're in a situation where the person uh, who is in there with the mail carrier is a little bit agitated by the uh, helicopters. Do you think that, uh, that the police might ask, might ask the uh, TV choppers to back off? I'll tell you one thing, they, they better because they're, look how close they are. The picture, you can, you can like, see his uh, armpits. Before where the person has obviously made threats against the helicopter. Uh, but, is this uh, with a gun? I, I could see that arm? happening, definitely, or at least asking us to stand back. Um, all you people expecting your social security checks in that one area, by the way, uh, good luck to you. Is the uh, police helicopter in relation to the you? Do they take a little more liberties with altitude? Um, they take a lot more liberties here. I think I might be able to get a shot of it here. Uh, you know something? Steve Wolford is like a real newsman. I want to say that. Over there at Channel 4, which they don't have too many news people. They really, uh, but Steve Wolford I like a lot. And who's the other one who brought that sound there? I can never think of her name and not Angela Ray. That's on with Steve Wolford on Channel 4 News. You told me the other day. You were just telling me the other day who it was. I forgot. Damn it, she's good. Okay. Can so you give us an idea where exactly? And her name is not Elliot Rodriguez. Make so many turns and twists and moves. Where are we? Southbound on 22nd Avenue, coming up on the Palmetto. Oh. They're coming up on the Palmetto. They're on 22nd Avenue. I Southbound. hate that when these mail uh, trucks go nuts. You know? the Palmetto. And as we said, the police ground units have ended their part of the chase. So uh, we understand that there are no longer police on the ground chasing this. Mail truck. Pull it over, you idiot. You asshole. We believe a, a hostage far, situation. A mail carrier hey, inside Carlos, that truck, the driving bank. the truck, and another person Maybe in there, some other checks possibly in there. holding that person hostage. Maybe he found his check from Ed McMahon and come out to find out that it was already a uh, uh, deadline two days ago. The police helicopter continues to follow this truck as it makes its way southbound 22nd Avenue, as you said, Tony, approaching oh, the, Palmetto. Under the Palmetto. Are they still Cross ahead of... Uh, oh, there's Treasure Island. Just went underneath the Palmetto. Right. Are the police still ahead of the truck trying to hold off traffic? Uh... No, uh, they are hanging way back. They're about maybe a quarter to half a mile back. They are still following the truck. Uh, we got a mail truck chase in South Dade. Right up on it like they were before. And you Is this in South Dade? How can it be in South no, Dade? No, it's in North, like I said. If, uh, by Treasure Island. If the person in that mail truck. Maybe he's not on the way to Treasure Island. Maybe he wants to go see a bus well, the, uh, have a way to get junction, in contact and with police get on the via a cell phone or, or something like that, other than just yelling out the window, which that person has apparently done a couple of times. Yeah, the, all the threats have been made at people standing around. You saw earlier, you saw him come to a, almost a stop at a, where there's a group of people. Ah. Apparently, they have Pulling called in the left hand and, lane uh, now. the threats. He's just made Pulling the threats. Pulling in the left turn lane. By Standards on the street. There's so a stoplight, ain't gonna stop him. I don't him. think he's oh, under he just, any uh, communication uh, or anything with the police. Now I decided to go back in the right hand lane. All right, I believe that was the first time we've seen him now actually blow through stop. He's and out. There's out. There's out. jumped out. There you can see some kids running. I don't know what's. They jumped and out. The or they the 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 guy jumped out. I don't know if there's been any shots fired or anything. The oh man, maybe he was being held a hostage. You think? Stop. Yeah. What street is this that we're on? Because he's still 22nd Avenue. I think you're wrong. I think the kid was behind the fence. You think the kid okay. jumped over the fence? I, no. I, he, they were, they were uh, looking. They were gooseneckers. You could almost make out the profile of somebody leaning over some People of those, running, uh, see the guy running those plastic directly, mail right? containers. Yeah, suppose this guy's arm got off the street. He's now in a residential area. I was just going to say, this we're back in a, a neighborhood. Chain. He started off in a neighborhood. Went uh, to one of the main highways. Ah, coming to a stop here, like right now. The this stop right here. Park on the other side of that Chevy. It's stopping. The truck stopping. is stopping. Maybe he's, maybe he's in a hurry to deliver the mail there. Maybe oh, just like for a, a second, out. though, as again. he picks up speed, and this has been, as we've been following it, has been a, a low-speed chase. Now wait a minute. Now he's stopping to talk to some dude. What the hell's that all about? Talking to he's the having mail a conversation. You got my bag. Sports Radio 560 QAM. QAM. Friday, you bastards. No asylum's hiding. A 
lot more than guns. They say they're weapons of mass destruction. I say we send a couple megatons bombing Iraq. In the Gulf War, we let him off the hook. I think it's time to give his butt a whoop. So it's time to load those B ones up on the rock. Bobby Rock Till there's nothing left to see Bobby Rock Till Saturn six feet deep Bobby Rock Blow up the creek Bobby Rock If we land from there, we'd bomb here up, live on CNN, bomb here up, ooh, bomb here up, we'll toss this stupid bomb, bomb here up, from here to kingdom come. Okay, here's some very emotional facts. By the way, the poll is up. What's your favorite movie that made men cry but won't admit it? Uh, Brian's Song, 18. Now, isn't it appropriate on a sports station like QAM? It would be a sports movie. And it was a very good movie, by the way. And you know who was in that? Uh, what's his name? James Conway. Very good. And who played Gail Sears? I forgot. I don't remember either. And who played Brian Piccolo? Ago. I don't remember. Or that was a, you know, what's his name? James Conway. Good movie, Brian Song, 18. I'm a man who never cries at movies, 17. Uh, okay, we have to take it your word. I mean, you know, if you want to be macho man, if you want to put on a good act for us, you've never, ever cried at a movie, never brought a tear to your eye, never got a little choked up, a little, you know, huh? Do you buy it? Boca Brian recommended one, so I wrote it down. Okay. The Amazing Colossal Man. Uh. His own son had to pull the switch. Pull what Wasn't switch? That tragic? The switch that turned him off. That turned his life off. Well, that sounds like Guiding Light, like Reva and what's his name? Richard. Well, that's right. You don't watch that either. And neither do I anymore. Uh, Schindler's List 10. E.T. 10. Old Yeller 9. Oh, gee, we don't have to put Old Yeller down. It's a Wonderful Life 5. Makes me want to put James Stewart down, but I guess it's too late. Field of Dreams 4. Rudy 4. Dead uh, Poet Society 4. Shawshank 4. Rain Man 4. Well, I feel good about that. Rain Man's got 4. That was my vote. My dog skipped 3. How about my dog Tiny? Oh, I'm sorry. See, I'm not going to sound insensitive because it makes me, I mean, you know, it's just that time, Tiny. Mask 3, Love Story of Pair, I'm a Woman Who Never Cries in Movies 2. Wow. Billy D. Williams. Played uh, Gail the Sayers. Thank you. Now, don't say the other guy. Gail Sayers. Who do I know? Walter Payton. The only reason I know Brian Jim Piccolo's McMahon. name is I used to live right by his park. Brian Piccolo Park. Uh, did I say love story of pair? Well, all these others either have two or one. Fatso's got one, and I, I don't get it. I don't under, understand what. I mean, I, I, I guess if you're as fat and frustrated as he was, you know. Didn't it have a happy ending though altogether? Yeah, oh well, sure. He, he got married, he got and girl. they had all of those right. kids, and it showed pictures. He was slimmer, he was fatter, but in the meantime, life went on. You know. You ate the yoni. Yeah, that was the problem. She was great. I tell you, any pull we take on. Under that, that would be a good poll. Underrated actors or actresses, Anne Bancroft. Right. She she's just great. And young Do you know that she, she wrote that? No. Yeah. Oh, you told me that before. I, I think forgot. directed it. I'm not sure, but she at least One wrote of those that. things. She's great. She is great. Married to Mel Brooks. Right. So can you can you how'd you like to be a fly oh. in that house? <laughs> like that. Even worse than Boca Bryan's house. Well, here's a fax from Harris K in Coral Springs who says. For all you peaceniks who don't believe Al-Qaeda and Saddam are in bed together are probably the same ones who think the mob has nothing to do with gambling. Right. It's a, that damn, shame it. that, it's a damn shame that Saddam has brainwashed all your mini-minds into making him look like some kind of a saint. Have we ever said he's a saint? No. No. Have we ever said we want to keep him alive? No. Have we ever said hey, that he's anything but a scumbag and a murdering and a piece of crap? No. Anyway, 
And uh, if if all you would stop bitching for just one minute and use your weak minds and realize a world without American inter interference would consist of North Korea attacking South Korea and Japan, China taking over Taiwan, India and Pakistan going nuclear. Uh, India and Pakistan going nuclear? I thought they'd gone late for that. nuclear. Iraq blitzing through the Middle East, etc. We should all, and, and as far as Iraq blitzing through the Middle East, I hate to break the news to you, but Israel has these things called nuclear weapons, which they haven't used so far, yes. thus far. As yet, as Mo was saying one night, David, there have been any complaints by the University of Miami as yet. We should all get on our knees and pray that every day that France does not ever replace the USA as a world superpower, for the world would turn to crepe. Crepe. Crap is what he's trying to say. Have, have we defended France on this program today? No. Oh, that's right. I'm doing this fast. Yeah, he, in the meantime, he's, he's not getting close. Like he's looking for I'm just wondering what or someone. the conversation is. I just can't help but wonder. So this mailman is being hijacked, which is what I thought. That was my first, and there were shots fired. He's got somebody with a uh, gun. And now he stopped at some residence there in Opalaka, and he's talking to some lady who's standing by the fence and chatting. And he's there, everybody stops stuff. Maybe he wants to, uh, Maybe he wants a grilled cheese sandwich. I don't know. Maybe he heard the show, and he got uh, Jones up for grilled cheese. And he's talked to someone in, in one of those police units. Yeah, <laughs> earlier, yeah. Tony, give us an idea. And the best part of it is he stopped to make a couple of mail deliveries along the way. Still around the area of 27th Avenue and about 151st. They just keep going in circles. Let's go over there. Let's put a tape on uh, this. Here's the Not Fourth Street. Not sure the avenue, but yeah, all you idiots out there listening, don't be uh, zipping over into that area so you can like rubberneck. Okay, this is like we don't know the guy. The, the mail guy, the letter carrier inside the vehicle is obviously his life is in jeopardy. He's got an armed wacko in the thing, and he's uh, being hijacked. But uh, you know, he's being mailjacked. What the situation is with the uh, police units that are, that are in pursuit? They're way off now. They they are in the area. They're probably setting up grids or trying to figure out where this person he's a grits lay strips down or something to that effect they're definitely keeping an eye on the unit they just made a ue there there's some more buddies and there's some more guys on the corner there's like another stop no oh, you me what yeah if i was them i'd get there yeah they're getting the hell out of there real bag. fast those kids are getting out of there real pronto anyway so anyway and it goes on to say it's only a matter of time before the world will thank america for pursuing freedom all over the world is what he's <laughs> Right. Okay, whatever you say, sir. Just keep twisting our words and keep manipulating back again and again. So that pretty soon we can take over the whole world. We can have like the British Empire. That worked out real well. And everybody it? can be free like we are here. Right, like the beast. Oh, the beast just came in to get weighed. <laughs> All right, let's do the break. And after the break, we'll have the exciting news of just how much more weight the beast has lost. I don't want to put any pressure on him, but it better be a real significant amount. It better be a real good amount or we might lose the account, okay? Follow what I'm saying? It better be a big, fat amount, or you're going to blow the account. And you know what they're going to say to him if he hasn't lost a lot more weight? At least at least five pounds. I don't want to put too much pressure. At least five pounds since last week, they're going to say, You asshole! Ten past noon at 560 WQM. Speaking of food, close your ears, Beast. Don't listen, because Flores is really, really good. Good thing he wasn't here that Tuesday when they brought us the food here to the studio. It was Damn sensational. Good. Brought us back to those olden days at IOD when we used to be on the 79th Street Causeway. And right up to the, Look at it. Even his head lost some weight. He looks downright well, yeah, downright fat. <laughs> he does. But not his head isn't as fat as it was last week when it got stuck in the door. Well, he grew some hair. Gruesome is the obvious word. Anyway, freshly made pizza dough and fresh baked garlic rolls at Flores. They bake them right there every day, right on the uh, spot. The portions are gigantic, and they use more cheese and meats on their pies than anybody in town. Boy, you think that George has got cheese. George and Miguel thought the food was great, too, and especially that I like the price. You'll be fighting for that last slice of pizza if it's from if it's from Flores. But don't take my word for it. Find out for yourself. Go to 731 Northeast 79th Street, just off Biscayne Boulevard, or call Flores at 305-758-5351 and get all your stuff delivered. They'll deliver from 34th and Biscayne all the way to 135th and Biscayne. Game. They'll go to Quayside, Cricket Club, the Jockey Club, even uh, as far west as 12th Avenue, east of Collins and 71st. Call them. If you're nice to little Judy, she'll tell you about the great pizza specials like $13.99 for large cheese, pie liter of soda, and six delicious chicken wings. Call Flores now, 305-758-5351. And be sure and tell them that Neil and old Petey Lenny sent you by. My and local. This is Sports Radio 560. QAM. Time to get it on. Do 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 do. 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 
my M.O. How is it they live in decrepit and I'm ancient? All over my old face are blue and reddish, purple veins. I don't know why they hate me or why they always rate me. It must be cause I got these blue and reddish, purple veins. A vein pop on my arm like a Ram McNally map of locker watt. I got veins on my nose and nobody knows that under my clothes I wear pantyhose. But that don't mean that I'm gay. If you think my arms are bad, you ought to see my legs. I might as well keep them smooth and shaved to show a little glass the next time I'm raping it. I could go to a surgeon, but that gives me the shivers. I would not want to walk out looking like Joan Rivers. Uh, where am I here? I fired the beast, the fat little freak. I did him a favor, now he can't afford to eat. The reason I dismissed that stinking fat bastard is because he wouldn't shut up and he can't play canasta. Hey, somebody talking over there. Nobody talks when I rap. I rap, then you talk. Hey, look at me. I'm hip, hip. I ain't no square. I'm a ding-dong daddy, man. I'm really dead. I fire anyone I want. I don't care. Especially if they make me flip my wig made of smelly green hair. I get fired myself. It even happens to the greats. West one once said, you get out of here or else we break your legs. So now I sit by the pool. Life's as good as it gets. With my paladin cocktail, placing bets on the jets. In paradise. Paradise. I don't kiss nobody's ass in paradise. Do, 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 do. I'll be slapping down the spookins when I get the chance. But the cleaners aren't ready with my lime green pants. How long does it take? Kelly Cole and complain. It was just a little thought, so what I left this day. Oh, you think that's funny? Want a knuckle sandwich, buddy? I can do what I want, because the management loves me. Can I tell you something, Mo? Something you ought to know. For the longest time, I wanted you to be my hoe. You are my type, pal. Now I am straight. Hell no. What are you doing? I won't take no for an answer. Well, get out of here. What is it? Not you. Get out of here. Get up, bitch. You asshole. 1217 at 560 WQM. Here's a fax that says, bang the drum slowly, De Niro, Yankee catcher. Bang the drum slowly. Write it down fastly, George. George is writing it down because Carlos is on the way to the bank to say, Blow me $50. And they're going to say, No. And he's on his way slowly. Probably. Well, he's got a little difficulty getting his act together. You know, he's a good guy, but he means well. But uh, one of the best movies for uh, men to guys to cry is Soldiers of Soldier of Orange from Holland. Your favorite place, Rutger Hauer's first movie. Remember that? Nope. Soldier of Orange. I don't either. I remember Agent Orange. I remember Clockwork Orange. Which somebody voted for that, by the way. As a tearjerker? Yeah, I don't understand why the hell you'd cry. Well, Please. they had it. It's in my pile here. There's eight million faxes. God. Uh, Young Frankenstein. GW, help me with these bags. MF, yes, you take the blonde, I'll take the one with the turban. Blazing Saddles, History of the World, and Young Frankenstein. Gene Wilder, you help me with these bags. Yeah, Marty MF, Feldman. Marty Feldman says, you take the blonde, I'll take the one with the turban. Right. And I cried. <laughs> I don't, don't, don't ask, I didn't write this, I'm just reading them, okay? Don't look at me like that. What's the matter with you? You asshole. Here's one that says, a movie that makes men cry, Bridges of Madison County. This is because we found out that Clint's movie career was over. Don't put that down. That's a little... <laughs> yeah. Somebody forgot to tell him, though, by the way. So you think he'll ever get his voice back? <laughs> hey, Neil, couple for you. The scene with Denzel, Roots and Color Purple. Uh, what? Oh, Glory, the scene with Denzel. Glory? Uh, it was an all right movie. Glory, it was, had a glory. sad ending, but nevertheless, it's your jerky. You want Remember to write that glory, it down Hallelujah? There? I sure put glory on there. I don't know. I didn't see it. Had a hole. Roots. Now, the color purple, purple wasn't that with, uh, what's your name? Yes, it was. Your favorite. Oh, no. If your you're going to tell me we're going to put down when that start, Oprah. I'm going to puke. Well, put it down. Color purple starring Oprah. Schindler's list we got. Okay, there you go. Thank you, TR. Just a thousand faxes here, man, they're pouring. They were a little slow to catch on today, but once they did, and of course, I'll tell you why. Why? Because guess what's leading the poll results so far? Thus far. As of now. Brian's song. No. What's your favorite movie that made men cry but won't admit it? I'm a man who never cries in movies. 21, that's leading. Uh. We got the real macho. Who says we don't got the macho men on this show, huh? Who says that? Well, we know who says that. Brian's song, 20. And in fact, I guarantee you, if you ask the mad dog, he'd admit. I've heard him talk about it. That he gets goosey and uh, wept up. And there have been movies he's shed a tear or two. Almost as much as when he sees Michigan get their ass beat. Uh, Schindler's List, 15. Did I say Brian's Song, 20? Old Yeller, 13. Field of Dreams, 11. E.T., 10. Shawshank Redemption, 8. No, Jason, I still... Where did Jason go, by the way? Where did he ever go when he left here? Somewhere, we don't know. 
He's a professional photographer now at Tea Rooms Around America. Taking snapshots of every letter of the alphabet. Do you ever do an I? Uh, it's a Wonderful Life 7. Rudy 6. Love Story 5. Rain Man and Dead Poet Society each have five. And after that, it's only five. So, saving Private uh, with Private Ryan. Woman Who Never Cries in Movies only two. See, I can't, I cannot even imagine a woman who never would cry, unless they just haven't seen many movies, you know. Or maybe the really hard bitten. Like Janet. Who's Janet? Reno. Oh, huh. she got bitten? It's hard. Sister Jean. The biting machine. Here's Brian who says, please include Untamed Heart with Christian Slater. George cried when he saw that because when he saw who was in it and realized he had paid for the ticket. Untamed Heart. Never heard of it. With Christian Slater. George, for some reason, George just hates Christian Slater. He just despises him. Is there any special reason or is it just like in, in general principle? It could be that he only plays one character, which is a poor imitation of Jack Nicholson. Is that what it is? Yeah. Because I don't hate Kurt Russell. It's just that he reminds me of Eisner. Disney all the time. Also be on the lookout for the trading of Luongo, Huzilius, Herme, and any other player with a future in the league. Yeah, yeah that's right. By March 15th. Poor Brian. You're right. So and what it, was that uh, Christian Slater movie I supposed to write down? Uh, Christian Huzilius. Untamed Heart. Uh, Untamed Heart. He used to look pretty good, Bill Christian Slater, for about half an hour. I never saw him then, but that's a rumor. City of Angels, Pride of the Yankees, we got the Lou Gehrig story. City of Angels, we got that. I have no idea what that is. Well, write them down, and then you'll. Uh, now, how are we going to do this? Because Carlos ain't coming back. You're going to handle this. You're going to fax this to I'm Eric. I'm just going to fax this to Eric, and hopefully we, uh, you know, won't do He'll handle 500 it. pages. He can handle it with his broad shoulders. That Eric, that Ojan provocateur in Orlando, that 600-pound giant, that 4,000-pound gorilla, as the Mad Dog would say. Okay, how about War with a Kid from Home Alone? Macaulay Culkin? Is Sulkin? What? Wasn't it Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone? Yeah. War. War. Is that the name of the movie? Never well, heard of don't it. Don't look at me. Am I going to go see a movie with Macaulay Culkin in it? Maybe. I don't think so. I'd rather stay home with Sulkin than see Macaulay Culkin. You nuts? Braveheart. Wasn't that Mel Gibson? Yeah. Well, uh, put it down. Didn't we already have that? Wait, what? What? We had one no, we had a different one, a uh, war movie. I see. Play it forward. Or play uh, it backward. What's uh, that? See, depressing. Norman, who was in that? Kevin Spacey. Is Kevin? Yes, he Spacey? is. Spacey? Everybody else thinks he is. In fact, every now and then he, like, blurts it out. He, I am. A, and then, like, a week later, no, I was just kidding. He's just not. Gay. How about a poll on how many men uh, your women in the audience have had sex with or vice versa? How the hell do you vice versa on our poll? Our poll techniques are kind of limited. Virgin, one to three. Uh, haven't we already done that? Or some virgin, some virgin thereof? Some virgin. Well, something to keep in mind for a far future date. Okay, thank you. Man, I think we finally caught up. And you know what pisses off the people on the phone is that we get all these faxes, and I get bogged down in the faxes and make these poor people wait. Look at that. Here's somebody who's been waiting for like 29 minutes, and they ought to be really pissed off at me. Fort Lauderdale, hello. Neil? Are you pissed off at me? No, sir, never. You, you ought to be. I got three things for you. Made you wait for a half hour to beat all those crappy faxes. And by the way, the mail truck guy is still going around and around. Go ahead. Uh, good for him. Uh, Schnitt Report, first of all, he's got uh, three major markets, and he's being dropped in Orlando. Yeah. So, uh... I guess for all those guys who think Schnitt's the best thing since, uh, uh, since, since sliced Russell. bread, yeah. But, uh, uh, and for the poll, with honors, with Joe Pesci. With honors. And, uh, a shameless request. How Joe about Pesci. good, how about good fellows when Joe Pesci gets, uh, made, made yeah, dead? Yeah, that too. Uh, Joe Pesci, Sesame Street. Okay, you got it. Thank you, sir. See ya. Next, and interesting the way he worked that all in there, a movie with Joe Pesci, then a Joe Pesci request, and et cetera and so on. I do like the scene in Goodfellas, though, where, uh, what's his name? Robert De Niro saying to what's his name's wife? I see. I, there's so many people in that. Ray Liotta's wife. Ray Liotta's wife. The zits bother me. We were talking about James Woods yesterday. He, James Woods is a piker compared to Ray Liotta. He's got zits that are as big as the craters on the moon. And Robert De Niro says, "Yeah, he got some nice uh, coats in there. Some nice yeah, fur. Right over yeah, here. Right, right over there. No, no, no. Right over there. Right around. No, no. I don't, I don't, want I don't, I don't think so. I don't think I gotta go. No, 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 no. Right down there. You know. No, I don't think so. I'll see you later. I'll see you later. 
That would be such a great movie if it weren't for that Ray Liotta narration. They made such a bad mistake on it. And, of course, a lot of people tell you it's a great movie. It's a good movie, but it, good fellas, but it could be a great fellas, you know? Don't you agree that the, it's, Absolutely. It's, it's irritating and annoying? I mean, when it comes on TV, I, like I, do, cop out. I do watch it again because I like that scene with Joe Pesci. Did <laughs> I use you? You know, that, like that. And I think of Ulka Brian, and of course you got to start laughing. I don't like when they're slicing the garlic with the razor blade really thin so that it melts. Nah, and well, the you like oil. the drug scene, of course, because where he's like cooking and drugging and drugging and cooking, because that's your drug thing again. You know, I, I was mean, talking that's... about the cooking in the prison. That didn't have anything to do with their drugs. Oh, I thought you were talking about when he was cooking in the kitchen. Prison cooking. Oh, that's techniques. right. They, they had the. Ra- oh yeah, what's his the name? Polly. Right. Polly. Paul that he ran it out. Poor Polly. You got to slice the garlic. Yeah, really Polly went too happy there so in the end, it wasn't it? Melts when it hits the olive oil. Now, now maybe this mail truck, maybe he's looking for the house that Ray Liotta and his family are looking for. Living something. In. What do you mean by that? He makes us stop every time. I, I understand every time they see people on the side of the street. But what is this dude talking? The the, uh, the kidnapper, people, the hijacker. Every time what? they see a gangster on the side of the street, they stop and talk to him. Yeah, and what are they talking about? The weather. <sighs> They got out any, any good social security Maybe. checks? Any uh, hot talking property? about snow? That's kind of like the weather. Snow. So anyway, the uh, possible hostage situation. It says in Channel Four. Fuck with her, and you saw earlier at least two guns. Well, this is a male, uh, a male, a male lady, because he said uh, with her. It's a male uh, lady a truck female man. A female uh, male man. And it just keeps, nothing happened yet, we'll advise. They keep going around and around and around, open lock around, and that's it. Channel 4's like, uh, got the cameras there, and they're going around. 27 past noon at 560, let me head you to go around to Boca. That's right, see Boca Brian, stop off and say hi to Mo, pull on his hairpiece, and stop by at the lights of West Boca. All you people on the Atkins Dine out there, they got over 600 delicious low-carb food products to keep you on a straight and narrowing path. And you'll be in snack heaven when you try the new sinfully low-carb loaf. A delicious new bread with just three grams of digestible carbs per slice and the delicious taste of whole wheat bread. Maybe you saw Dr. Atkins last night on uh, Donahue, huh? You see him? I did. And uh, more and more people are starting to finally come around and admit that Atkins is the way to go. What, what is he doing now? Is he also on the floor now? <laughs> what, what, what was that? What inspired? I'm telling you, I must be a panic today or it must have been something happening there. No, it no. was me? It, it was you. It wasn't that loaf. Is that what did it? The loaf. I, in no fact, I, it smells it. like he dropped the loaf right in there. I between the two of you, man, I haven't seen this much red since the communists left town. Didn't they? Anyway, do the smart thing and head for delights of uh, a Boca, your number one low-carb sugar-free store in the world. You'll find them on the northeast corner of Glades and 441 next to Boston Market. Or call one eight seven seven Low Carb online. <laughs> LowCarb.com. Don't forget, there's only one Delights of West Boca, your official Atkins Retail Center. It's a hoot. Live, Live and local. This is Sports Radio 560. QAQAM. You know the calls. The ones that always come in at dinner time. They show up on your caller ID box as private, unavailable, or anonymous. Well, now, you can block those calls before they come in. Here's how it works. A solicitor dials your number, and before your phone even has a chance to ring, the call gets forwarded to us at Mob Bell. Good evening. Is this mister? Hey, clam it, Lily Tomlin. You lose this number, okay? You call back again, I will personally break every bone in your freaking body. At Ma Bell, our operators have been trained in the art of communication. So while you're having a peaceful meal after a long day, we're working hard behind the scenes, handing out threats like Halloween candy. I'd like to take a moment of your time to tell you about a great offer. Hey, 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 hey. One more word out of you, Billy Gelman of 14 King Street in San Francisco. Your little Ford Focus will go boom when you turn the key, all right? Intimidation through death threats, physical violence, and bodily harm mob bell so only the calls you want get through top 33 at 560 wqm we got the mad dog standing right he'll be here one he'll tell you that he cries at movies i guarantee he's not one of those guys that's got to prove his masculinity just because he used to be a tight end derek says i tried to call you this morning to give you this information but after over 45 minutes on hold i finally reached my destination and had to hang up sorry derek do you get kickbacks from the mobile phone industry? We only wish. Anyway, you and George were talking about Debbie Does Dallas this morning. I know you have a little dish. I got a little one. So I'll let you know that last Saturday night they played it in its entirety sans the so-called money shot. Squirt, squirt. I only cost the last 50 minutes or so, but you're right about that Bambi chick. Wow. Bambi Woods. Pretty goods. 
Also, another movie I want to recommend for your list would be John Q. For our list. That's the Denzel Washington movie where his son has a bad heart. Didn't see it, but I'm sure would have cried if I'd have seen it. John saw Q. It. And? Didn't cry, but... I, well, this is, see, again, the poll isn't what movie did you cry at. I understand. Everybody likes to go, uh, what's your favorite movie that's made men cry, but they won't admit it? Not necessarily you cry. We Bob, cry. We all cry. We scream for ice cream. Yeah, I think I'm going to forget about the... Um, melt the uh, forget about it. Smurf? Grilled cheese sandwich. No, the grilled cheese sandwich diet. Yeah. I think the hot fudge Sunday sound diet sounds better. S'mores. No, not s'mores. Maybe I'll just wait for Nestle's turtle again. You asshole! Okay. It says that with such emotion, I'll tell you. If he would do the whole show with that much emotion, he might make a three-sheer, but might, being the operative term. Uh, there's a show on tonight, Beyond with James Van Prague, where Ju uh, Juliet Mills, who plays Tabitha on Passion, she's great. We'll try to contact Josh Evans, who played Timmy from Beyond the Grave. This is not a passion story. Hey, I've seen the promos. This is really a guy who thinks like uh, Jonathan Edward. He's another he can one. communicate with the dead. Let's see what Timmy has to say. And what's up with both of those guys, Jonathan Edward and that James Van Prog, being such lispy, wincy, uh, mincing uh, queens? What are you trying to say, huh? They seem a little gay to me. Is, what is that what you're trying to say? Because I know what Timmy's going to say. I'm dying over here. That's what Timmy's going to say tonight. They make special mention of him in that Penn and Teller thing. That show oh, bullsh. did you see it? I forgot about no, that. No, I forgot. Oh. But it's going to be on some more. Apparently, they're go it's a series, and they're going to out other things, other scams. Really? Yeah. Good. Long overdue. And they say every word in the book, by the way, as they're doing it. It's great. Here's a fact that says, Shane, come back, Shane. Now, you said that before the show. Didn't you? I, I did say it before the show, and there's a lady, coincidentally, that uh, just called that wants to talk about Shane. Is she on and her Brandon. now? She's on there now. She's the lady. Here's a lady in Hollywood. Hello. Shane. Come Shane. back, Shane. Let my husband named our son Brandon because of that. Isn't that Ma something? Ma needs you. Ma needs you. Come back, Shane. He cries <laughs> every time. <laughs> yeah. I, I never saw that movie. That was Alan Ladd. And uh, Brandon Jack Brandon Allen's. DeWilda. Yeah, but that was Brandon DeWilda was like a little boy in that movie. Right. I really couldn't care about him. But when he was in All Fall Down with um, Carl Malden... And with Warren Beatty, then he became very interesting, Brandon DeWilda. And then he died. And have a great day. It's a, it's a tear jerker. Okay, thanks. All righty. See ya. Well, what'd you, what were you so excited about? That you, well, that's, cause that's what she wanted to say with Shane. Come back, Shane! I didn't see the movie. So what am I excited about? It was a little bit disconcerting that Brandon DeWilda had that scar on his face. Kind of like Aaron Gaby, the hockey player. He had that scar on his face, which I guess the Lord works in mysterious ways. He just wants to prove that nobody can be perfect, you know? The hostage is a female man. It's confirmed. A female man. Yes. Okay. Oh, and by the way, they're still going round and round um, like Perry Como. Just started to heat up now within the past few minutes for the past 40 minutes. Now, what's going to happen when they run out of gas? Basically hung back. Uh, fearing the safety of the mail carrier, yep. but as you can see now, the police are right on top of that truck. Tony, go ahead. They're, they are definitely kind of weird. They're, 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 boy, they're moving. It goes uh, they're trying to get ahead of this vehicle. They're kind of. This will end soon, I believe. Oh. They're, they're going to, I've also received word that they have uh, snipers as well ready to. Uh, ah! Snipers are standing by, <laughs> getting ready to mess with him, huh? Here's a fax that says, I'd like to put my two cents in. What about Jerry Maguire with Tom Cruise? Don't look at me. I didn't see no Jerry uh, Maguire. I, I didn't see it. I didn't think it was that kind of a movie. Write it down. All right. But what kind of a movie? A Tom Cruise was in it. It's enough to make me cry. Also, he says, uh, P.S. Tell George the shipment came in. Who's that from? A friend of yours. Which Here. one? How do I know who to call? Here's one that says, the movie version of Flowers for Algernon. Of course, I never you saw it. I didn't read the book. Uh, the book and the movie are both here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Cliff Robertson. Oh, and what about that very sad movie he was in where he played the retarded guy, Charlie? That's Flowers for Algernon. That was great. Is that the name That's of the movie? That's the name of the movie, yes. I never knew that. I thought the movie was called Charlie. Are you sure? Well, maybe are you that's sure? what the movie version of the book is called, but I thought... Okay, put down flowers for Algernon. And maybe in parentheses, uh, Eric will know. He'll look it up. Won't you, Eric? Won't you look it up? No. Maybe because uh, we would have Carlos do, but he's busy trying to rob a bank so he can cover the check that he wrote to uh, Clarence. I'll tell you, we got such high finance going on here among all these uh, Macy Pippics we got running around with their $14 checks. Now, does Clarence charge usury? 
Anyway, we got 24 people to say I'm a man who never cries at the movies. 25 for Brian's song. Just went in the first place. Schindler's List, 18. Old Yeller, 14. Oh, Lassie, come home, girl. I feel the And the best part about Lassie is that Lassie never was a girl. Right. I think one of them out of, like, the yeah. 20. Uh, Field of Dreams, 11, E.T., 10, Shawshank Redemption, 8, Wonderful Life, 7, Rudy, 7, Love Story, 7, with Allie McGraw, Ray Meland, and Ryan O'Neill. Saving Private Ryan, 5, Dead Poets Society, 5, My Dog Skip, 5, Rain Man, 5, and everybody else is way down. Now, let's look at the ones that have none out of uh, 199 votes. Ordinary People, Other Side of the Tracks. Other Side of the Tracks. You mentioned it. I didn't say to put it on the poll. I was just talking about that. That was the movie Brad Pitt was in with uh, uh, right. uh, uh, Ricky Schroeder. Well, Eric heard you say it and stuck it on there. Eric didn't hear me say it. Carl, don't be blaming Eric just because Carlos is right. here. Carlos hear. heard you say it and stuck it on there. Blame Carlos because he's them not heard here. you say it and stuck uh, it on there. I don't there. want that. Well, what was so sad about that? I don't know. The fact that you know Brad Pitt didn't take off all his clothes, I guess. But then again, eventually we saw it one way or another. Amistad none. Death be not proud, none. My left foot, none. Crimson tide, none. And driving Miss Daisy. I don't remember ever saying anything about driving Miss Daisy. Do you? Where'd that no, come from? I don't know. Where the hell did that come from? Driving Miss Daisy. Maybe Morgan Freeman called it in. Oh. God. I, it's a good thing we're checking these. You know, the ones that have no votes, because I think we're getting some ringers on there. Twenty till one at five sixty. WQM Mad Dog coming along at one o'clock to give you all the lowdown on the big NHL All Star game coming up Sunday. Going to read the list of names in the paper. Tell you about that Sandwich Ozolinch that the Panthers traded away for a couple of real journeyman players there, Lance Ward and Sandwich Ozolinch, for a couple of guys that nobody ever heard of before, including Pavel Trinka. Hey, by the way, pot fan, Denise, you idiot. It's not Tarinka. It's, uh, why even bother, you know, when you're dealing with a dumb frog? God, he's just frightening, that Denise pot fan. Anyway, here's the deal. If you want to forget about all your problems, you need a good night's sleep. How do you get one with a good mattress? You'll sleep like a baby on a mattress from Dial a Mattress. The top names in the world, they got Sealy, Serta, Simmons, King Coil in every size and style. And the best part of the deal is, all the way around, you beat those betting and department stores upside down and sideways. For example, when it comes to guarantees, you've got 30 days to try it out in your home with the best comfort exchange policy in the world instead of having to sleep on that mattress 30 to 60 days before you can even exchange it. And then when you do exchange with the other places, if you have to, they'll charge you for restock, redelivery, and you pay full retail price on exchanges. Not a Dial a Mattress. For real comfort and no hidden charges, no extra fees, call 1-800-MATTRESS now. you got the 30-day comfort exchange period, no hassles at all. you got up to a month to make sure it's the right mattress for you and your back. If you'd like to shop online, check them out at mattress.com. It's the website for Dollar Mattress. And don't forget about their unbeatable delivery any day, seven days a week, in whatever two-hour period that's convenient for you and actually show up on time. So call right now, get rid of your lumpy old worn-out mattress, and start getting a great night's sleep. It'll make a hell of a difference in the way you feel every day. Call Dial a Mattress toll-free and be sure and tell them that fat old Neil and the original fat boy told you to call 1-800-MATTRESS. 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S. Live and local, this is 560. The radio's all yours now. QAM. Neil, God. I remember all those happy days, those sunny days of just three years ago. All my stocks just kept on rising, and I kept on fantasizing about that show. Then along came number 43, just like that my stocks began to slide. I don't like to throw no blame around, but it looks like Georgie took me for a ride. <laughs> Sing GW's Bushonomics, surprise side economic blues. Guaranteed to make you feel good from your head down to the holes in your shoes. Join your friends and neighbors, hell you ain't got nothing to lose. You asshole, sing GW's Bushonomics. Supply side economic blues. And how about those folks at Enron? Man, they really took a hit big time. And we won't forget those accounting guys. What they did with the numbers, it's a crime. And all 
those other companies left all their employees high and dry. It just ain't the good old American way. It almost makes a grown man wanna cry. Sing GW's Bushonomics, supply side economic blues. From your head down to the holes in your shoes Join your friends and neighbors Hell, you ain't got nothing to lose You asshole GW's Bushonomics Supply side economic blues And those billion dollar dividend Tax cut proposals, that's a stretch With a ten trillion dollar economy Please somebody tell me what's the catch It talk about the real world You'd have to say old George ain't got a clue No way Let's just send him back to Texas For this trickle down economic blue Bye-bye, Joe. Sing GW's Bushonomics, supply-side economic blues. Oi! Guaranteed to make you feel good from your head down to the holes in your shoes. Yeah! Join your friends and neighbors. Hell, you ain't got nothing to lose. Economic blues. Long as Come on, America, let's all sing. Sing GW's Bushonomics, supply side economic blues. Guaranteed to make you feel good from your head down to the holes in your shoes. Yeah! Join your friends and neighbors. Hell, you ain't got no. Supply side economic blues. Sing GW's Bushonomics. Supply side economic blues. That's home with the That mail truck, that uh, hijacked mail truck is coming right toward us. County Line Road. And where? Whereabouts are they now? County Line and what? They're, they're heading east on County Line Road towards us. They'll yeah. They'll be approaching 441 soon. Approaching 441 soon. Oh, oh, oh. And they're getting in the left-hand lane, George. There it is. There they are at the intersection. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, but they're not making They're coming our way. Now. I want to go look. They're coming our they're way. They're going south. That's They're south. going south on 441. Right out here. That was Ives Dairy they just turned at? What street was that? That was Ives Dairy? That was Dairy? on County Line Road. Oh, they're going to be County passing Road. by oh, the front I of the see. building I see here what seconds. you're saying. They're coming out right, right toward us. I can't believe it, but they're like in the middle lane. Coming south. Boca Brian just ran. Don't stick your head out the door, okay? Brian, Brian. Too late. Oh, Clarence stuck his head out. Everybody's going to go watch. They're going to go, go, Everybody's Jay. going out there. They want to see this mail truck go by. Isn't this Hey, Brian, go outside so we can see you. Maybe they're coming to power. Maybe the guy's pissed off they wouldn't play his request. But they're in a the right-hand lane. Now, let's see. County Line Road. they got to be past this already, don't they? No. They don't? Oh, sure they do. How are you going to be? Oh, we'll be able to see the, uh, the uh, sub-center, Chuck's. Or something. How could they not be biased already? It's only like... They're going real slow. Huh? They're not going real slow. They're zipping right along, baby. They're they're moseying right on down the road. Hey, Channel 4, pull the camera back a little bit. So I, I don't think they're where you think they are. What are all those cars parked on the side of the road? What what are those? What's that parking lot? I don't, I don't know. Up the road. Nah. The car dealerships. I, I don't think they're where you think they are. But no, nevertheless, George says they're, they're right not. up the road. And now they're in the middle lane. Oh, they go over the bridge. They're, they just went over the bridge. Over what bridge? What bridge are you talking about? The now they're in the right-hand lane. They're making a right-hand turn into a park. What? The beast did what? You got them? They went right by. I they went you. right by, and the beast said, oh, oh, right. That's a, the, And there they are. They're right across the, the street. Center. In the shopping center. Where we always have lunch. Oh, my God. They're right maybe by the sub center. Maybe he's stopping for the... Uh, behind uh, oh, they got a Jamaican market over there. Maybe he wants some meat patties. down? Maybe they wanted a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> And now they're turning on to Ives Dairy Road, right? Yeah. 
They're on I-Ferry right Road, road going, going back uh, to west. the stadium. They're going west toward the stadium. <laughs> yeah, maybe this guy wants to play for the Dolphins. I don't know. And there they go. Away they go as they go round and round like Perry Como. Did you get to see him? Look at the beast. His head is red as a, a beet. Man, maybe they wanted to come and see the beast, see if he'd be lost. Oh, by the way, I did mention on the air the beast has lost 46 pounds. Oh! Excellent. Nice work. Here's one that says one for your list. The Yearling starring Gregory Peck. If you don't cry at this movie, you have no soul. You got that, The Yearling? The Yearling, yeah, absolutely. Also, tell Boca Brian, the movie that he was talking about isn't Amazing Colossal Man, but The Colossus of New York. He You're said, right, I'm changing it. No, he said no. One of these 50s robot movies that argues you can't have the concept of right and wrong without a soul. That's not the one he's talking about, but anyway. Last thing was listening to Magic this morning when Grace Slick dropped in on a Rick Shaw. Shaw was going on about what a coincidence they just played somebody to love since the computer picks out the music here. How sad, says this faxer, and you're right. Charlie is the name of that movie, by the way, and it's spelled C-H-R-L-Y. Just looks up on the Cliff Robertson website. Got it. Saving Private Ryan. Well, got it. Schindler's List. Got it. Here's one, an honest guy. He says two things that make him cry. One is the movie Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. And the other thing he says, I cry every time I see the president on television. Nice going, sir. And one last one. Ready? Can you handle it? I don't want to put a lot of pressure on you. Especially after the excitement. Man, that was like the highlight of some people's day, which tells you about life in South Florida. Nobody ran out there to get on screen. They saw the hijacked uh, mail truck out there with a mail lady. Right out, went zipping right by, kitty corner across the street, cut through the parking lot, and right down the old <coughs> Hershey Highway and Ivesbury Road, out toward the stadium. Maybe they want to get a good seat for next season. I missed part of the show this morning, didn't see the movie on the pool. I'm an adult male, and the way we were with Robert Redford and Barbara Streisand made me cry. Now, now, now you're rolling your eyes back. What's wrong with you, you Barbara asshole? Streisand? God, I, I'm not saying I liked it or that I even saw it. Barbara Streisand makes me cry just to think about her, okay? She brings tears to my eyes. You asshole! 1253 at 560 WQM. They're buried in cars down there at uh, Layman's uh, at the Hallett. Would you cut the crap already? God. Tom Layman and Joe Prieto are buried in cars like I just started to say before George again got carried away, which he ought to be. The factory has sent Hallett so many cars, there's no place to stick them. Even Tom Layman's had to park a few in his driveway, so he says, and they'd like to place one in yours. Hallett, right as we speak, is blowing out the all-new vehicles, regardless of profit, including that great zippy Pontiac Vibe starting only 13998 and get up to $5,000 off every GMC Envoy in stock. Plus, get 0% financing or up to a $3,000 rebate. An endless sea of dependable used cars, trucks, and SUVs at unbeatable prices, too, at Hallett. And if everybody else in town has turned you down or said your credit is marginal at best or maybe really sucks, have no fear because Hallett is here. They'll get you a deal. It's the Winter Blizzard Emergency Clearance Sale going on right now at Hallett Pontiac GMC, 134. 401 South Dixie Highway. That's on US 1 across from the falls. Open every day, seven days a week. Mention my name. You'll save even more. You can call them on the Neil Rogers Neil Deal Hotline. Toll free, 1-888-534-4211. That's 1-888-534-4211 for Hallett Pontiac GMC, who be professional grade. We are Sports Radio 560 QAM. Don't have a penis. Jump in a taxi cab, I said, driver, Central Park. He looked at me so quizzically, I could tell he was in the dark. So I acted out my park charade, and with my arms, the trees I made. Nobody speaks English anymore. <laughs> I went down to Miami Beach, where the weather is nice and sunny. I walk into a liquor store, but the guy there talks real funny. I ask him for a pint of whole Jim Beam. He says, no, at the end of what does that mean? <laughs> Nobody speaks English anymore. At the corner, Delhi. Hell, I think I'm in Pakistan. Speak English, smelly. Or you can go back to Iran. <laughs> I came here many years ago. Learned my ABC. I don't say muchas gracias, I say pretty please. So get yourself to a classroom quick, you're in America now, stop making me sick. Nobody speaks English. Okay, that's just about going to do it, and we got uh, big excitement over there, right? Uh, he's placed those mailboxes up. Uh, like I said, they were 
They went immediately to the back of the mail truck. They got them cornered. Now, did they pull anybody out of there yet or not? No. They still got to pull over. Now, where is that? That's on... Uh, 191 and 27th Avenue. Oh, my God. So, anyway, it's like right off the road a piece. Anyway, the poll continues. What's your favorite movie that may have been cry before they won't admit it? But they won't admit it. How's that go? Bob, Brian Song, 30. I'm a man who never cries in movies, 29. Schindler's List, 18. Old Yeller, 16. And there it goes. And so we'll see what happens. You know what I'm saying? I'll guarantee you the Mad Dog will admit he cries like even doing dolphin games with Mo. Bye, bye, bye. The Neil Rogers Show on 560 WQAM, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Gang rape is funny.